Chapter 181. What a coincidence, your here too Lu Fan had always considered himself an even-tempered person. But being even-tempered was one thing, enacting justice was another. Ni Shuang, the big-headed child who had kneeled in front of Lu Fan on that rainy night, had begged him to save Ni Chongqing. Now, he had become a cultivator who was independent and self-reliant. All along, Lu Fan had been paying attention to the amount of hard work and effort Ni Shuang poured into cultivating. In comparison, Ni Yu was lazy and worked in fits and starts. One could say Ni Shuang was the symbol of hard work. Who didn't like a hard-working child? Ni Shuang was someone Lu Fan thought very highly about. Because of this, there was no reason for Lu Fan to just sit by and do nothing when Ni Shuang was beaten up by the Lord of Zerong in the West County battlefield. The boy had been beaten to a pulp and had fallen into a coma. On Bila Lake, a terrifying pressure seemed to have become tangible. The soul of the blonde man who was kneeling on the surface of the lake did not move. The internal organ's realm absolutely could not withstand the temper of the golden elixir realm's monster. Lu Fan sat in his wheelchair, paying no heed to the blonde man and the Buddhist monk. He picked up a go piece with his fingers. The spirit pressure chessboard seemed to mirror the mountains and the rivers. The blonde man and the Buddhist monk, as well as the spiritual sense duplicate of the Lord of the Plain trapped in the mid-level martial world, were all looking on in shock. That chessboard, was it a type of secret weapon? Clatter. Lu Fan put down a go piece on the board. It was as if a formless wave had spread through heaven and earth. Lu Fan's white robes were billowing in the breeze, fluttering as though there was a wind blowing at it. His hair was also fluttering about, brushing over Lu Fan's handsome countenance. He looked rather ethereal. North County, outside Tianhan Gate. Snow fell endlessly on the boundless field, covering the space with a thick quilted jacket. The Lord of Zerong sat on his litter held up by several Zerong warriors. They braved the snowstorm and treaded forth with great difficulty. Behind them, the large Zerong army followed, lined up in neat rows, one after the other. They had withdrawn from Tianhan Gate in North County and were resting for the time being. The Zerong people had long become accustomed to the sights of the war. To them, the war would be at its height come winter. Every year, the Lord of Zerong would lead a large army to attack North County at least once. He was bent on breaking the seal on Tianhan Gate and crossing the path to a boundless and prosperous land. Once they reached their goal, there would be an abundance of crops and food waiting for them. Then they would never have to about not having enough food to eat. But Tianhen Gate was difficult to break past. Every year, their army would leave countless corpses in its wake. Although war was cruel, it was absolutely necessary, in the eyes of the Lord of Zerong. Winning the war would be the best outcome, they would have enough food to eat and could stand to live through the winter merrily. If they lost, then that was okay as well. Losing a significant number of people would reduce the stress on their food shortage. And this year, the leaders of the different Zerong regions had felt that something different was arising. The Lord of Zerong had called for all the Zerong people to gather, and there were 100,000 soldiers that formed the army that was going to storm Tianhan Gate. This scale of an attack was unprecedented. On top of that, something was odd about the Lord of Zerong. There was something strange about him, but they all could feel was a sense of overwhelming pressure. The tribe leaders who had differing opinions already had their necks snapped by the Lord of Zerong and their bodies tossed out into the snowstorm, covered up long ago in the boundless snow. They were buried so thoroughly it was impossible to retrieve them even if you wanted to. The remaining leaders were seething, but they did not dare say a thing. The dogmatic Lord of Zerong controlled the entire Zerong army. Not a single leader would be able to contend with the Lord of Zerong. The most terrifying thing was that the strength of the Lord of Zerong was so overwhelming, it left the people in despair. The Lord of Zerong sat on his litter, deep in thought. Although they had not successfully infiltrated North County, Tantai Zan and Zhang Li were no cause for concern. Although he was exceptional, he was still human. It was Bai Qingniao and Ni Shuang who had come to help after. They were the real source of trouble. They were only at the Qi condensation realm but their methods were incomparably strange. The young lady controlled three phoenixes which had left him badly scorched, but that was fine. That big-headed child, equipped with startling determination and a solid foundation, had hit him with a firm punch. The Lord of Zerong was extremely overwhelmed. This world was magnificent. 
it was exceptional and full of talent, and there was much to discover. The world he once knew was like that, but it had been ruined. Hum. Suddenly, he did not know when, the snow had stopped falling. In heaven and earth existed an incomparably terrifying power, a vastly oppressive power, one that made it difficult for people to breathe amidst. The Lord of Zerong was suddenly gripped with anxiety. There was a sense of danger, the kind that stemmed from the depths of his heart that filled him. The horses of the Zerong army were neighing. This was the kind of panic that stirred them in the face of great danger. Beasts were born with greater awareness than people. The Lord of Zerong leapt down from his litter. Rumble. Clouds were rolling across the sky. In the next moment, the wind and snow that fell all over the place seemed to have torn apart and morphed into a giant palm. The middle finger of the palm was stacked on the index finger as if someone was placing a go piece onto a chessboard. Who's there? The Lord of Zerong was shocked. His eyes could not help but widen. There was no conversation, there were no words. The go player used the landscape as his chessboard. In the next moment, the Lord of Zerong triggered all of the power he had within him, and the power of the Peak Foundation building was demonstrated to its full extent. Boom! The gigantic palm lowered itself, poised to put down a go piece. Boom! At this moment, it was as if the snow on the ground had been thoroughly dispersed by an enormous force and revealed the bare earth beneath it. All the soldiers in the Zerong army crumbled under the pressure, forced to kneel with their heads to the ground. The tribe leaders were all overcome with horror. What was happening? This expedition of theirs that they had started without the blessings of the gods, had they angered the deities of the fields. The densely packed Zerong army were all kneeling in the snow-covered space. They did not dare to move. The Lord of Zerong reached the ground. The power of the Peak Foundation building had been triggered to the extreme. In the eyes of the leaders, their lord was resisting the heavens. Not willing to cede, not to the heavens, or to fate. The Zerong people and the various Zerong tribe leaders were taking sneak peeks at the sight. Boom! There was an overwhelming pressure, one so powerful it seemed like the wind and snow were going to explode. The Lord of Zerong was so shocked that his eyes almost fell out. This power, the Lord of Zerong inhaled a sharp breath. He resisted this oppressive power with his peak foundation building power. A golden elixir realm monster? This world's Lord of the Plain? The Lord of Zerong was overwhelmed, finding it difficult to believe. This was but a low-level martial world, how did the Golden Elixir Realm monster get here? It was as if the world had morphed into a cage at this moment. There was a white flame burning in the Lord of Zerong's eyes. Indistinctly, he saw a vague figure. Sitting in a wheelchair with his sleeves rolled back, a man put a go piece down on the chessboard. After that, he seemed to notice something. He looked up slowly to stare right at the Lord of Zerong. The Lord of Zerong felt as though his consciousness was been hammered down by a heavy steel hammer. Blood spilled from his nose and mouth. The skin on his face burned and evaporated to reveal a coal-like face. The fire burned again and thoroughly enveloped his head. The Lord of Zerong did not want to die. The white flames were strange. The moment they appeared, they forced the Lord of Zerong to bring forth strength to combat the pressure. A foot stepped down on the ground violently. The earth shook. The Lord of Zerong turned into a beam of black light and flew out of the area of spirit pressure. He rushed into the snowfield, running maniacally through the great expanse of snow, sending ice flurrying in every direction. Bila Lake. Lu Fan's eyebrows rose. Hum. He actually succeeded in struggling out of the spirit pressure of the spirit pressure chessboard? This was actually the first time Lu Fan was encountering such a situation. Generally speaking, in such a situation, the Lord of Zerong should not have been able to escape from the clutches of his spirit pressure. Is it because of the white fire? That flame, it doesn't seem like something one in the internal organs realm can possess. Lu Fan fell into deep thought. He pushed his sleeves back again and retrieved a black go piece from the go bowl. He put this piece down, stacking it on top of another black go piece that had already been put in place. With his index finger, he pushed forward slightly to make the piece land on the board with a slight scraping sound. Everything from the internal organs realm could be settled with a single go piece. If there was something that couldn't be, then, he would use two. The Lord of Zerong who was escaping with all his might felt very much like an ant. Running across the boundless chessboard, the white fire that burned his head was the dead spirit fire. 
It was the sole culprit behind the destruction of his world. The moment he obtained this fire, his world had collapsed around him. This flame was from the plane of a high-level martial world, and he had betrayed the world that had originally belonged to him in order to obtain this flame. But he had no regrets. With the dead spirit fire, it would only be a matter of time before he staged his comeback. As long as he could obtain a world, and if he was given enough time, he would be able to go one step further based on his current foundation to become a true powerhouse. As such, when he felt the pull of a low-level martial world, he came over without hesitating. He thought this opportunity belonged to him. After all, it was a low-level martial world and there was no existence that posed any threat to him here. With the dead spirit fire, he feared no one, not even a lord of the plain. But now, he was wrong. So very wrong. This was no ordinary low-level martial world. This lord of the plain was actually in existence at the level of the golden elixir realm. Run. The further he ran, the better. As long as he could stay alive and not lose the dead spirit fire, he still had a chance of staging a comeback. The lord of Zerong ran with all his might. But, it was as if the heaven and earth had solidified yet again to become a chessboard. No matter how much he ran, he could never run out of this region, out of the shackles of this chessboard. Snow scattered again. Morphing to form a hand that laid down a go piece. Like a chess player, it floated down slowly to a point with one finger. The Lord of Zerong howled. The flames had spread to his entire body now and his entire being had become a white flame. He clenched a fist and the flames rose into the sky, melting the ice and snow around him, colliding with the finger that had broken through the clouds. Boom. The man on fire kneeled with his head pressed to the ground. Lord of the Plain. Spare me. I did not mean to offend you, and I'm willing to sacrifice 100,000 Zerong soldiers for this life of mine. The man on fire raised his head painstakingly. The horrifying spirit pressure had made it difficult for him to even speak. Nevertheless, he howled in fear, he did not want to die. The Lord of Zerong's voice was completely unadulterated. Indistinctly, as if one with the snow and wind, it had echoed through the entire expanse of snow. The Zerong soldiers kneeling on the ground were shocked, looking up at their lord in disbelief. The various tribe leaders were so horrified, their bodies were shaking. Their lord, was going to sacrifice them to the god? In heaven and earth, clouds rolled. After a while, they morphed to form a human face, a humongous human face. The person opened his mouth and the world was filled with a sound not unlike that of an explosive rumble. No problem exists without a root cause. You caused my child from White Jade City to be beaten until he vomited blood, so you will be the one to repay this debt. North County will be responsible for Zerong's debt. The face spoke and it was as if the voice had crushed the falling snow to pieces. Beneath, the Lord of Zerong who was kneeling in the snowy expanse had been startled. What? A debt of beating up a child from the White Jade City. The Lord of Zerong was reminded of the scene at Tianhen Gate, where he had been engaged in a heated fistfight with that stubborn, big-headed child. Had it been that one blow that had forced this monster of the Golden Elixir realm to intervene? Just because of that one punch. In that instant, the Lord of Zerong felt an immense force suffocating him. He had actually been very meticulous and had even taken on the face of the Lord of Zerong so as to not attract attention, all to surreptitiously invade this world. He had not been negligent this entire time, but just one punch to a single child. And that one punch was the reason he was going six feet under. He was unwilling to accept this. This world is but a low-level martial world. Why has the Golden Elixir Realm appeared here? Why is a lord of the plain like you at the Golden Elixir Realm? I refuse. I will not accept this, the lord of Zerong howled. The clouds rolled again to form a huge palm, shaped to put down a go-piece on a chessboard. Rumble. The Lord of Zerong howled indignantly, but it was thoroughly drowned out by a thunderous roar, not unlike an avalanche. The 100,000 Zerong soldiers kneeled in the raging snowstorm. They were trembling as they watched their Lord perish by the power of the heaven and earth. Bila Lake There was a light breeze sailing across the lake. The lake water was very much like a clear mirror, and imperceptible waves were rippling across it. All of a sudden, the thick fog stirred and the lake caved in. It looked like there was a transparent boat sailing on top of it. The thick fog tore apart and a gigantic palm made of spirit chi floated into view. The blonde man kneeling on the ground shook. 
Nailed by silver blades, the Buddhist monk who was on the verge of death could not help but look over. Only to see, there was a soul restrained in the center of the palm, and it appeared to have lost all will to live. The soul was covered in white flames and howled unceasingly, giving off an extremely strong sense of resentment and indignance. When he saw the blonde man and Buddhist monk, the soul of the Lord of Zerong was stunned. The blonde man looked at the soul of the Lord of Zerong and smiled awkwardly. What a coincidence, you're here too. The Buddhist monk, on the other hand, opened his mouth but said nothing. The soul of the Lord of Zerong recovered from his stupor and began struggling and screaming again. The blonde man looked at the struggling soul with sympathy. He wanted to remind the other. But before he could, the young man with the handsome face intervened from where he sat in his wheelchair. Lu Fan glanced at the Lord of Zerong's soul as he struggled. He raised his hand from the arm of his wheelchair. A silver light gleamed. In the next moment, the soul of the Lord of Zerong who had been struggling did not dare move anymore. In front of him dangled silver blades that were giving off a cold aura, and every single one of them gave off a terrifying aura. Every single blade was a high-grade treasure. At that moment, the soul of the Lord of Zerong finally got a good look at the young man sitting in the wheelchair. Lord of the Plain? Qi Condensation Realm. The Lord of Zerong froze in shock. From the beginning, the Lord of Zerong had had the same misconception the blonde man and the Buddhist monk did. But when Lu Fan raised his hand and waved it about gently, the silver knife pierced right through his body to forcefully cut away the white flame that had integrated into his soul, the Lord of Zerong understood. There were some people who looked like unimpressive qi refiners, only they turned out to have extremely terrifying monsters from the golden elixir realm. The white flame that had been carved out floated right in front of Lu Fan with a wave of his hand. Cold as ice, and yet hot as fire, to think these two odd traits could coexist in this single ball of flame. Lu Fan stared at the flame and it seemed as though his figure was reflected in the flame as well. Chapter 182 Tantai Zan beheads the dragon in his dreams. North County, Tianhen Gate. The Great War had ended, leaving behind nothing but corpses littering the ground. Tantai Zan was dressed in his battle gear and the blood on his body had frozen solid because of the ice-cold air. He stood in front of the city gates. Moju and Mo Bike stood beside him quietly as well. The giant gates to the city opened. Dense snow fluttered down from the sky. The North County soldiers shivered. As the snow continued flurrying down, they wrapped the corpses in burial sheets and heaved them back to the gate. Tantai Zan stood in front of the gate, solemn and respectful. He looked silently at the corpses wrapped in burial sheets. There was a violent wave of emotions surging behind his eyes, he clenched his fists. The general beside him had also lapsed into silence. To die on the battlefield is heroic, their names would go down in history. But a lot of the men who died today would never leave their mark in history despite their deaths. Yet, they had run out into the battlefield with no complaints or regrets. Mo Ju was silent. His crane cloak was draped over his body and he had an exceptionally stern look on his face. It was not his first time seeing something like this. In North County, there was something like this happening every year. The Zerong people were always stirring up trouble by the borders, and the only ones who could defend the borders were these men. Although Mo Beike was Mo his giant, this was also his first time experiencing such a war at the frontiers. He lifted his head and stared up at the sky where snow fell from. After some time, he heaved a long sigh. You lot be careful when transporting the bodies back to the gate, Tantai Zan said after he raised a hand to signal for a general to come over. And make sure all of their family members are well taken care of. North County has no shortage of rations for the winter, so hand out more to the families of our fallen brothers. The general left to relay his order to the rest. Snow fell everywhere, piling on top of the despair. Mo Ju looked towards Tantai Zan and he realized that the man seemed to have aged quite a bit. The doors to Tianhen Gate closed. In the gate tower, soldiers in armor guarded the city solemnly. The flag billowed in the wind. Inside the city, Tantai Zan stepped into the warm gate tower. He removed his armor and shook the snow off his body. Several people were gathered in the hall. Luo Cheng, Zhang Li, Kai Lian, and the rest had all gathered here. Thank you all for helping North County. Words alone cannot convey my gratitude. Tantai Zan relaxed. There was a smile on his face. 
he greeted the crowd with a fist and palm salute. If not for Bai Qingniao, Luo Cheng, and the rest of them, perhaps North County would not have been able to hold out against the attack from the Zerong army. That Lord of Zerong, he was so strong, it was terrifying. Though an army of cultivators was established at the Dragon Gate at Wenshan Peak, North County suffered great casualties in this war, mostly due to the insane Zerong warriors who had no concept of pain. Tantai Zan had some lingering fear, truth be told. Had he failed to guard Tianhen Gate, then the consequences would truly have been dire. Is Ni Shuang doing okay? Tantai Zan probed. Tantai Zan quite admired Ni Shuang. Though the other was young, he possessed valor uncommon in others. He was able to command a terrifying power within that small body of his. On top of that, he had shown no fear in the face of powerful enemies. It was difficult for Tantai Zan to not applaud courage like this. He had already called for the best physician in the gate and instructed for him to properly treat Ni Shuang's wounds. He's doing fine, just a little overworked. There was damage to his organs. He should be fine with a few days of rest, Luo Cheng replied, his hands in a fist and palm salute. Tantai Zan finally heaved a sigh of relief at this news. He had someone serve hot alcohol and everyone basked in the warmth. At that moment, there was a horse speeding through the biting wind. Through the falling snow came a black dragon guard from the capital city, rushing forward at full speed. This black dragon guard came bearing a document that he handed over to the guards at Tianhen Gate. He entered the gate, reporting, a messenger from the capital requests an audience. Tantai Zan had been sitting in the hall, sipping on hot wine as he chatted with the crowd. Suddenly, he frowned. Mo Beike and Mo Ju exchanged glances. The two of them seemed to have guessed what was going on. Mo Ju sighed. Mo Beike, on the other hand, shook his head in disappointment. A black dragon guard in his black armor stepped through the gate and stood right in front of Tantai Zan. The black dragon guard greeted him with a fist and palm salute, but he did not kneel. Instead, he pulled out the emperor's decree from Yu Wen Shu and handed it over to Tantai Zan. Tantai Zan took the decree, opened the scroll, and skimmed through its contents quickly. The longer he looked at it, the sterner the expression on his face became. In the large hall, the crowd seemed to have noticed the change in the atmosphere. Mo Ju stood up. He looked over at Luo Cheng, Bai Chinganao, and the rest, then motioned for the servants to guide them out of the hall. Luo Cheng and the rest have detected a weird scent, but they did not say anything. There were many things they were better off not knowing about. Please stay. General Zhang, Tantai Zan opened his mouth to say. Zhang Li, who was on his way out, frowned and stopped in his tracks. Without hiding anything, Tantai Zan handed the emperor's decree to Zhang Li. Zhang Li took the decree and quickly skimmed through it. He heaved a long sigh of relief when he understood the contents of the decree. He did not expect Yuan Shu to make such a decision. How could he make such a decision when the country was facing a crisis like this? The capital city was only dispatching the Black Dragon Guard because they wanted North County to hand Zhang Li over. This was as good as a deal. Using a national crisis to make a deal like this, Tantai Zan could not help but be furious. Rumble. Tantai Zan slammed a fist on the wooden pillar and it caved slightly. Peefed. Taking advantage of our tragedy like this? Does he have no shame? There's no way I'd ask that little emperor for help, not even when I'm down to the last North County soldier. Tantai Zan spoke, exhaling roughly. The emperor's decree was really vexing. The emperor sees this mess with the five barbarians as an opportunity to weaken the three counties. According to the report from the scout, the west and south counties had also been attacked by the barbarians. Especially West County, where the Gafong and Moria Empire had joined forces. The entire city had fallen to the war and their cavalry suffered great casualties, Mo Beike said. To a certain extent, the emperor has indeed been the one who gained the most from this mess with the five barbarians. Tantai Zan took in a deep breath, then he turned to look at Zhang Li. Return. General Zhang. The little emperor wants you back. I won't hold you back either, but from now onwards, North County severs its ties with Great Zhou. The next time we meet will be on the battlefield, and neither of us should hold back when we exchange blows, Tantai Zan said. Everyone in the room was shocked as they listened. What did Tantai Zan mean? Tantai Zan walked to the door and looked out at the snow falling outside the window. 
Every snowflake seemed to carry a strange sorrow with it. In Tantai Zan's eyes, they were stained red with blood. Mo Ju and Mo Beike exchanged glances. Their eyes were gleaming. Zhang Li's gaze hardened as well. The moment he said that Zhang Li strode right out of the room without a single word, venturing out into the snow. Capital City. Yuan Shu stood under the falling snow. A maidservant held out an umbrella to shield him from the snow. An old eunuch stood behind him respectfully. Your Majesty, the Imperial Advisor has left the book pavilion and is headed east. The shrill and hoarse voice of the old eunuch lingered in the garden because of the winter. Oh? The Imperial Advisor left the capital city and is heading east. He's heading to Dongyang County then, no? West County, South County, and North County. He didn't head down to these three counties but he's adamant about going to Dongyang County. Does he think the other three counties are worry-free? Yu Wen Shu asked with his hands behind his back. The layer of ice on the surface of the lake cracked open. A gigantic black dragon floated up to the surface of the water. Yu Wen Shu raised his hand and placed it on the dragon's ice-cold scales. The maidservant holding out the umbrella for Yu Wen Shu began to quake. The black dragon had inspired in her a great pressure and fear. For a mortal like this maidservant, this was extremely terrifying. Yu Wen Shu stroked the forehead of Black Dragon. The Black Dragon, which had been restless, calmed under his touch. Yu Wen Shu felt the bond between him and Black Dragon grow deeper still. He closed his eyes. It seemed like there was an influx of energy flowing from the Black Dragon to Yu Wen Shu, and Yu Wen Shu's energy also transferred over to the Black Dragon in turn. He could feel the energy swirling in his body, and Yu Wen Shu could not help the upward turn of his lips. The black dragon had transformed, and this sort of transformation was also happening to Yu Wenshu. Yu Wenshu felt rather carefree, he could feel himself becoming stronger. The stronger he was, the stronger Great Zhou would become. Bila, Lake Island. On the surface of the lake that was enshrouded in thick fog, Lu Fan sat in his wheelchair as he looked out at the white flame that had been separated from the soul of the Lord of Zerong. What is this? Lu Fan opened his mouth. The soul of the Lord of Zerong was weak beyond compare, and he did not want to speak. Lu Fan did not mind. This white flame did not actually have that much strong energy, but, it gave Lu Fan a rather weird feeling. This feeling was a rare one. Very quickly, the system provided him with information for identification. Dead spirit fire, heavenly fire of heaven and earth, produced in a high-level martial world with dead chi as its source, it possesses the power to control dead spirits. Lu Fan stared at the system's definition and raised a brow. The definition was bare, but every bit of it was exceptionally shocking. Produced in a high-level martial world, controlling dead spirits. Lu Fan could not help but take this more seriously. After all, heavenly fire of heaven and earth. Lu Fan raised a hand to hold up the ball of fire. Very quickly, this ball of fire morphed into the shape of a skull. Lu Fan flipped his hand over to extinguish the flame. A wisp of spiritual sense surged forth and entered the ball of white fire in an instant. In a moment, the fire began to warp. Lu Fan started analyzing the properties of this ball of fire. With dead chi as its base, this fire was completely different from regular fires on a fundamental basis. This fire possessed spirit intellect, so much so that it produced a bewitching aura. This bewitching aura was rather evil. This was a ball of evil flame. Of course, Lu Fan had not been bewitched. He was simply researching the properties of this dead spirit fire. The flame can assist in cultivation, oh, Lu Fan thought. Just as well, Earth's origin has created the fire element. With this dead spirit fire, as a blueprint, I can create much more pseudo-heavenly fire of heaven and earth, and turn it into a completely new cultivation classification. Of course, Lu Fan was not anxious to begin work on it immediately. His consciousness twitched. The white flame was continually suppressed and suppressed further still. Finally, it turned into a white bead. Finally, Lu Fan turned to look at the Buddhist monk, the blonde man, and the soul of the Lord of Zerong. Wanderer. Every wanderer must have once owned a world and enjoyed a brilliant and splendid civilization. Lu Fan leaned back into his chair, finger tapping lightly on its arm. These civilizations might have been destroyed, but to Lu Fan, they had high research value. If he managed to take the best parts of it back with him and tossed away the worst parts of it, 
he could make Wuang continent even stronger and make civilization much more splendid and diverse. The Wuang continent today was still at the low-level martial world level. But, they were not too far from stepping into the mid-level martial world, and so Lu Fan had to start making the preparations for the mid-level martial world. The appearance of these wanderers was timely. Lu Fan now had references to work with. Aside from the wanderers, there was also the spiritual sense of the Lord of the Plain from the mid-level martial world, that would allow Lu Fan a glimpse into the mysteries of the mid-level martial world. Sometimes, Lu Fan suspected that these wanderers were benefits from the system. He had always considered the possibility of this being true. He snapped back from his thoughts. Lu Fan cast a glance at the soul of the Buddhist monk. The Buddhist monk's soul trembled and the soul of the blonde man kneeling on the ground seemed rather horrified because they detected a bout of rather unfriendly emotion from Lu Fan. No, the Buddhist monk, whose soul was nailed in the air by silver blades, shook his head non-stop. Lu Fan slowly moved closer and closer towards him in his wheelchair. No, don't come any closer, the Buddhist monk pleaded. Of course, if pleading had any use, the Lord of Zerong would not have ended up here. Lu Fan's pupils morphed into throbbing lines. He smacked a palm down onto the soul of the Buddhist monk. The soul exploded into stars instantly. Lu Fan clenched his fists, and an innumerable number of stars starting to gather quickly, forming a single shiny go piece floating in the sky. Lu Fan had a palm under his chin as he sat in his wheelchair. The spirit pressure chessboard floated. Lu Fan retrieved the bowl of black go pieces, calm as ever. His consciousness twitched. He placed the soul of the Buddhist monk which had morphed into the white go piece on the chessboard. Lu Fan picked up a black piece and placed it down with his sleeves rolled back. Every go piece on the board offered him a glimpse into another world. The wreckage of the five barbarians came to an end with the barbarians' retreat. But the major powers did not dare to relax yet. Although the barbarians had retreated, there was no telling whether they would try to stage a comeback immediately. In West County, Harau Gate was still heavily guarded. Overlord had personally stationed himself there. As for Ni Chongqing, LV Mudui, Mingyue, and the rest of them, they had exchanged their goodbyes with Overlord and left West County after the battle ended. They used the Dragon Gate in Dongyan River to return to Bila. Overlord sent the crowd off with mixed feelings. When it was time to say goodbye, Overlord looked at Mingyue. The young lady wearing a veil and carrying her pippa had played an unexpectedly instrumental role in this war. Mo Luki did not return to Bila. He took off the soldier's attire he had worn in an attempt to camouflage. He put on his bamboo hat and wiped away the traces of blood on the silver scissors. Dressed in thick robes, he braved the heavy snow falling from the skies and disappeared beneath Harau Gate. He walked out of West County and headed to an even further place. He still needed to grow and become stronger. Because Overlord was strong now, he could not defeat the man. But Mo Luki will not forget the revenge and vengeance he owed him. This was the enmity and resentment he had with Overlord. Overlord looked at Mo Luki's figure disappeared in the snowstorm. He made no attempts to stop the other, nor did he speak about this enmity. Things had come to a conclusion. Overlord raised his head and watched as the snow fell from the sky. Perhaps he should properly analyze just why that great change in heaven and earth had occurred. A change in heaven and earth, was it because of, that person in White Jade City? North County. In the dark night, Tantai Zan had finished dealing with quite a few issues. He blew out the flickering candle flame. The ashy smoke of the wax wafted upwards and filled the room. Tantai Zan took off his robes and lay in bed. Tired, he closed his eyes. The sight that had appeared in front of him was one of the corpses densely packed outside North County. It had been a long time since he had last slept well. After quite some time, Tantai Zan fell into a deep slumber. Suddenly, Tantai Zan opened his eyes. He discovered icy cold, black scales outside his window, and a heavy rumble. He leapt out of bed and picked up the sword beside his pillow. Throwing on his armor, he made his way over to the window in two steps, only to realize there was an enormous black dragon that had surrounded his house so completely it barely left any gaps. Black dragon's eyes were gleaming with a dim radiance. It opened its mouth and growled in Tantai Zan's direction, then it charged. Tantai Zan glared angrily. He brandished the sword, unsheathing it from the scabbard. With one blow, he moved to cut off the dragon's head. 
The huge and savage dragon's head fell in front of Tantai Zan. Dragon blood poured forth, spraying viciously and drenching Tantai Zan. Huh. He woke from his dream. In the dark night, Tantai Zan opened his eyes suddenly and cursed angrily. He sat up, out of breath, panting. Chapter 183. Can all these kinds of cultivation let us live forever? Li Sansi took a deep breath and continued running. He reached Tianhen Gate at night. He heaved a warm sigh. Fluffy snow fell in the dark night and with the guidance of the garrison soldiers, he went up the gate tower. Since it was snowing, the brilliant light of the moon was hidden by dense clouds. Not even a sliver of it peeked through. The garrison soldiers of North County all knew who Li Sansi was. Although he had held off the North County army alone at Bujo Peak, there was no denying the amount of work he had put into fending off the Zarong soldiers when he had been wandering around their borders. Has it ended? Li Sansi whispered. He stood in the snow, his Taoist robes billowing in the wind. Beside him, a North County general dressed in armor nodded. This war has been a difficult one. The Zarong army marched under the leadership of the Lord of Zarong. Had it not been for the cultivators of White Jade City, Tianhen Gate, would probably be in enemy hands now, the general said. Li Sansi was conflicted. He looked at the battlefield beyond Tianhen Gate. The boundless desert had been covered by the expanse of snow, now traces of blood had seeped into the ground, and some of the soldiers' corpses were completely soaked. Li Sansi could still feel the aura of murderous intent that was difficult to miss. He could anticipate just how intense this battle must have been for them. If Tianhen Gate had fallen because he had was late, and the Zarong soldiers were left to wreak havoc on the vast expanse of North County land, then Li Sansi would have been consumed by guilt and loathing. But the fact remains that my coming late has caused too many North County soldiers to die, this is a wrong I cannot deny. Li Sansi lifted his head. The ice-cold snow drifted onto his face, melting into icy water and gliding down his face. He lifted his wooden sword. Li Sansi used his wooden sword to knock on the bluestone of the modeled Tianhen Gate Tower. He rapped three times in succession as if making an oath. Under the shocked gaze of the North County General, Li Sansi leapt down from the gate tower with a fluttering of his robes. I will go after the Zarong army, this wrong of mine, I will be the one to make up for it. Li Sansi's voice drifted with the falling snow. In the wintry night, a thin figure dressed in Taoist robes clutched a wooden sword with one hand and ventured out across the snow. The soldiers at the gate tower admired him. The general looked in pride at the sight of Li Sansi floating off into the distance. His face reflected the emotional conflict he felt. The number of people in the world who could, like Li Sansi, run off to pursue the 100,000 strong Zarong army all by himself with just his sword, could be counted with one's hands. This sort of courage was something to envy and strive for. South County. In the night, the moon shone brightly. Tang Xianshang sat in the courtyard. He lay back in his rocking chair as he listened to the servant reading out the news and updates to him. When he heard that the people in the war outside Nanjin City had won a hard-earned victory, he finally heaved a sigh of relief. He had been worrying about this since the war started. He was extremely fearful of losing the war. The chaos that the five barbarians had caused in Great Zhou had been intense from the get-go. I hear it was due to help from the strong people of the Taoist Pavilion and Sword Pavilion, as well as swordsmen, Jing Yu, from White Jade City, that made it possible to stop the Nanman army, the servant spoke as he bowed. Even White Jade City intervened? As expected, White Jade City probably predicted this would happen quite some time ago. Immortal encounters are becoming more and more rampant in the world now. Tang Yimo managed to get one, the young master Lu of Bailuo managed to as well, and honestly, even the five barbarians are able to as well, Tang Shansheng muttered under his breath. He looked towards the moon that was bright and clear, and laughed. In the eyes of the immortal, how can mere mortals be their equals? He controls the heaven and earth and keeps the balance of this world. But when the five barbarians obtain immortal encounters, their greed will be insatiable. They will want to invade Great Zhou and throw us all into chaos. They will ruin the beautiful mountains and waters and reenact the chaos they have caused in Great Zhou this year. It's a good thing this happened during the era of White Jade City. In terms of cultivator strength, White Jade City is the best in the world. The five barbarians, what could they do? Tang Xianshang laughed. Oh right, is there any news from the capital city? Tang Xianshang asked. 
he was still keeping up with news from the capital city. South County had lost the capital in the fight and because of this, they had to be extra meticulous with news in the capital city. The servant's expression flickered. He said, the letter has been sent to the capital city, but. But what? Tang Xianshang stopped rocking in his chair. He coughed as he stood up. The servant hurried to drape a thick blanket over Tang Xianshang who was still struggling with a severe illness. I heard that the West County has also sent news of the Nanman invasion to the capital city, but the emperor did not care about it. Even with reports of battles from South County and West County, he's acting as if he has not heard anything. But when news from North County reached his ears, on the other hand, the emperor sent out a decree to Tianan Gate. But I don't know exactly what the emperor's decree was. Also, the imperial advisor has left Book Pavilion after the emperor sent out his decree. He got into a horse carriage and left the capital city. He has headed east. The servant trailed behind Tang Xianshang. If the imperial advisor is heading east, he's likely heading towards Dongyang County. It seems that the little emperor has disappointed the imperial advisor. Tang Xianshang chuckled. The little emperor is still not mature enough, or maybe the black dragon guard has made him lose his way. Things like power are as beneficial as they are malicious. I hope the emperor didn't go overboard with the decree he sent to North County. These are abnormal times, and that old thing Tan Tai Zan has quite a nasty temper. If he has gone overboard, then I fear he might trigger some shocking incident. Tang Xianshang laughed, then covered his mouth and coughed lightly, splotches of red dotting his white handkerchief. He sighed, the woes of mortality, such as to be human. What a shame Lu Ping'an of Bila wouldn't see me. If he would, I really do want to ask him a question. Could all these forms of cultivation really extend one's life? Tang Xianshang looked up at the bright, brilliant moon. He shook his head. Underneath the moonlight, his shadow looked rather desolate. The capital city. Snow fell in heaps. Not a single person walked along the streets of the capital city. Aside from the guards on patrol, the capital city was like a ghost town with no traces of life. Beneath the gate tower of the capital city, two people dressed in black garb dragged along horses that were huffing hotly in front of Kong Nanfei. With respectful nods, they took two letters from Kong Nanfei's hands. One goes to North County, and the other goes to West County. Don't mix them up, Kong Nanfei instructed solemnly. The two people in black robes stuffed the letters firmly into the fronts of their robes. Don't worry, Commander Kong. We will get the letters delivered. Kong Nanfei nodded. In the snowy night, the two people dressed in black robes hurled themselves onto their horses. The sound of hooves on the ground was jarring. The horses kicked up snow, one headed north and the other headed west. Kong Nanfei retreated into the capital city. The gates to the city closed suddenly, jolting off the little bit of snow that sat on the gate tower. The two people dressed in black robes galloped off speedily, parting ways when they reached a fork in the path. In the dark night, snow fell. When the two people had galloped several miles away from the capital city. Suddenly, there were arrows shooting at them from both sides of the highway. Pissed. A sharp arrow pierced the belly of one of the horses and the sound of its whinnying rang out in the dark night. The horse fell to the ground, bringing the black-robed rider down with it. They rolled about in the snow. Whoosh, in the dense forest of the highway, leaves were shaking loose. A black dragon guard covered in light armor slid down from the trees. Their blades glinted with a blinding light as they reflected the snow, causing the black-robed man to flinch. Black dragon bodyguards, the thirteen black dragon armored men. The black-robed man inhaled a deep breath. Without hesitating at all, he turned to leave. Numerous black dragon bodyguards dressed in light armor raised the spirit chi in their chi core and galloped at full speed. The black-robed man was also a cultivator and there was chi in his core, but how could he escape the pursuit of this many black dragon guards? They soon caught up to him and a fight broke out on the snowfield. The snow was kicked up and they scattered like beads of snow foam. The battle ended quickly. After all, the black dragon bodyguards had the advantage of numbers. The white blade cut through the man's body and dragged through his torso. His blood spilled everywhere and thoroughly stained the snow red. The black-robed man lost his life quickly. A black dragon guard retrieved the letter from his robes. He scanned the content of the letter, then called for the other black dragon guards to leave. Snow fell everywhere. 
Only the black-robed corpse remained, lying in a pool of his own blood, staining the snowy ground. His eyes were wide open as they stared up, unseeing, at the snow falling from the sky. The two black-robed people had been ambushed simultaneously. Both of them died on the spot. Kong Nanfei had no way of knowing this. After all, he was no Lu Fan, and there was no way he would have been able to find out about what happened miles away from him. In the capital city, the old eunuch flicked his fly whisk about as he walked speedily. In the depths of the imperial city, Zijin Palace, a dim candle flame was burning and it gave off a mild yellow gleam that shone into the courtyard of the palace. In the palace, eunuchs and maid servants had all been dismissed, leaving only Yu and Shu sitting alone on his throne. The old eunuch pushed open the doors and stepped into the room. He saw Yu and Shu clutching the carving of Black Dragon, not looking away from it at all. It was a rather creepy scene. The old eunuch shivered. Your Majesty, the old eunuch said. Under the candlelight, Yu and Shu lifted his head to look at the old eunuch. That one gaze had the old eunuch's heart seizing unconsciously. Suddenly, the old eunuch found Yu and Shu's gaze rather familiar. It was much like the gaze of the black dragon. What's the matter? Yu and Shu put away the black dragon carving, frowning as he looked at the old eunuch. Your Majesty's bodyguards, the thirteen black dragon armored men, acted under your orders. On the capital city highway, they intercepted and killed the two messengers, the old eunuch said. Oh? Yu and Shu's eyes glinted. If there were letters seized, hand them to me quickly. Understood. With his body bowed, the old eunuch retrieved the two letters and passed them to Yu Wen Shu. Yu Wen Shu took the bloodstained letters from the old eunuch. He tore off the head of the envelopes and read the letters. Under the light of the candle as he continued to read, his eyes glinted brighter. Finally, he broke into raucous laughter. The old eunuch had not read the letter, so he did not know why Yu Wen Shu was so happy. But he could tell from Yu Wen Shu's smile that the contents of this letter must be of utmost importance. As expected of my teacher, the brilliant imperial advisor of mine. Yu Wen Shu squinted and the smile slid off his face. Suddenly, a bout of anger flashed in his eyes. I, have I not done well? What did I do wrong? Why is everyone revolting against me? Why does everyone want to leave me? Yu Wen Shu asked indignantly after he stopped laughing, his fists clenched. The old eunuch kneeled with his head touching the floor, unmoving. No wonder I thought something was strange. The imperial advisor, who always had the situation under his control, had dared to question the Confucianist philosopher alone, so how was it possible that he would retire to the book pavilion so easily? He's had this all planned out this whole time, huh? He's set his plan in motion such that West County and North County will be doomed eternally. He's set it all up, but now he wants to forsake it entirely. It won't be that simple. Bila, Lake Island. A figure strode out from the responsive dragon's dragon gate. Jing Yu had the Jing Heaven Sword on his back and Ni Chongqing brandished his cleaver, while LV Mudui had a bamboo stick in his hand. All of them had returned from the various counties to Lake Island. On the island, Ni Yu, who had a black pot on top of her head, could not help the gleam that entered her eyes when she saw these familiar people. Ning Zhao had been cultivating. The aura on her body gradually stabilized and she opened her eyes slowly. Ni Yu waved excitedly at Jing Yu and the rest. Ni Chongqing stepped over in his white robes. He looked at Ning Zhao from the distance. Not bad, you're almost done with refining five organs. His realm was almost the same as Ning Zhao's, but he had exploited the anomaly of the world to finish refining the five organs in one go. Ning Zhao had obviously gleaned quite a bit from that anomaly of the world as well. And Ni Shuang? Ni Chongqing held his cleaver as he swept his gaze across the entire lake island, the expression on his face slowly hardening. Ni Shuang and Bai Qingniao headed to the North County battlefield, Ning Zhao said. With how strong Ni Shuang is now, there shouldn't be an issue in him going there. However, Ni Chongqing's face grew solemn. You don't understand, Ning Zhao, the five barbarians' attack on Great Zhou this time is not normal. Ni Chongqing, whose face had been calm, suddenly seemed conflicted. But still, he repressed the worry he had for Ni Shuang. Although he had always been harsh on Ni Shuang, deep down in his heart, he still thought of Ni Shuang as his precious son. What about the young master? Ni Chongqing asked, suppressing the anxiety in his chest. 
The young master left the gate tower and headed to the surface of the lake. The fog is dense so I can't see what exactly he's doing there, said Ni Yu with the black pot still on her head, chewing on a sugar-coated gathering chi elixir. Ni Chongqing frowned. He did not know what the young master could possibly be up to this time. He had wanted to ask young master about the situation with the anomaly of the world, but now he would have to head to North County first. If North County had people like the blonde man and the Buddhist monk, Bai Qingyao and Ni Shuang might not be able to handle it. He took in a deep breath. Ni Chongqing did not care. He stepped into the Dragon Gate again and rushed towards North County. Meanwhile, Jing Yu and the rest turned to look at each other. They had evidently learned how severe the situation really was. Ni Shuang doesn't have a lot of experience with battles, will he, be alright? Jing Yu frowned as well, worried, he was rather perplexed. Had he known earlier, he would have warned Ni Shuang before he left. He would have told the boy that, if he met an opponent he could not defeat, he had to run. Where there was life, there was hope. The boat on the lake swayed. LV Dongxuan and Lu Chongkong had arrived on boats as well. They stepped onto the island, only to find everyone gathered. Lu Fan was still secluded in the fog. They could not break through the fog, so they could only watch from the island. Lu Chongkong caught sight of Jing Yu and the rest who had returned. Concerned, he asked after their situation at their respective battlefields. Jing Yu had the Jing Heaven Sword in his hand and he hurriedly reported every detail of his experience on the battlefield. Lu Chongkong had quite a vivid picture of how cruel the war was, thanks to his passionate description. When he learned that the enemies on the battlefield who could produce spikes from the earth, Lu Chongkong's expression changed. There are people amongst the Nanmen who have had immortal encounters as well. Perhaps Fanner wanted to stop the war for three months because of these people from the five barbarians who have had immortal encounters. Seems like Fanner predicted the five barbarians' attack on Great Zhou. Lu Chongkong took in a deep breath. LV Dongxuan stroked the gold chain at his neck, squinting his eyes. Suddenly, something changed in the gazes of the crowd that had been chatting amongst themselves on the lake island because the fog that shrouded the surface of the lake had started to clear. Vaguely, they could hear a rumbling not unlike the evening drums and morning bells of a monastery, as well the sound of chanting. The sounds reverberated in their ears. Mingyue, the young lady with the pippa in her hand, shivered. How could she not recognize this sound? What was it, if not the Amitabha that the Buddhist monk had recited on the South County battlefield with his palms together? They watched the fog roll, and out from it swept a blurry Buddha's shadow that covered the entire sky. It gave off an extensive and incomparably oppressive aura. Abruptly, a faint snickering sounded from the fog. A glimpse could be seen of silver blades tearing apart the statue of Buddha. The statue fell apart in both directions, but in the dissipating fog. The peaceful surface of the lake stirred as ripples kicked up. Lu Fan sat in his wheelchair and slowly rolled himself forward, through the collapsed Buddha statue. Chapter 184 In White Jade City, Young Master Will Lecture Every go piece he put on the board offered him a glimpse into another world. In the thick fog, Lu Fan was putting pieces down on the spirit pressure chessboard, playing with the piece that the Buddhist monk's soul had transformed into. As he played this game, he could glimpse at the Buddhist monk's life. Every wanderer had a world he belonged to, as well as a civilization. These civilizations served as references from which Lu Fan could draw lessons from. During the match, as sudden as if he were watching a movie, a blurry image appeared in Lu Fan's eyes, like a dream. In this dream, he saw a well-groomed young man with a paper fan in his hand, blessed with both brains and brawn. The young man walked along Zhonghu. He repaid all his debts and acted on his vengeance, killing evildoers and exterminated mountain bandits. He was in high spirits, and he paid little to no regard to the heroes of the world. Because he was blessed with extraordinary martial arts talents, his cultivation increased rapidly. He had barely been cultivating for a few years before he reached peak qi condensation and become the strongest warrior in Zhonghu. When he reached peak qi condensation, he grew tired of cultivating, because he could not progress past qi condensation to move to foundation building. He deviated at a curious path, choosing to single-handedly challenge the 36 schools and sects of Zhonghu. The 36 schools and sects that had been challenged by him fell, every single one of them, without exception and the young man was victorious. In high spirits, he mocked the heroes. 
The 36 schools and sects could not stomach this humiliation. They gathered in a mountain villa to covertly discuss how to deal with this young man. The owner of this villa personally proposed to let his celibate daughter be bait. As such, the young man who had been traveling the world had yet another chance encounter. Every time he had brushed past somebody in all of his past lives, he did not turn but finally, he turned back in this one. The young man brought the naw. Ve young lady along with him as he traveled the world. They roamed about, they righted wrongs. When the young man wanted to try breaking through to foundation building, so the young lady invited him back to the mountain villa to do so. The young man agreed gleefully. The owner of the mountain villa leaked this news to the 36 schools and sects. Everyone heard about the young man's plans to break through to foundation building, and they all panicked. They joined forces to surround and ambush the villa when the young man was at the point of making his breakthrough. A great war came to a cruel end. The young man lost his poise and charisma. His clothes were stained crimson with blood and his hair was in a mess. There was an ennui in his eyes, that was disappointment born of betrayal. The young lady knew she was in the wrong. With the price of her own life, she paid for that of the young man's. The young man was consumed with grief. At the sight of the young lady's death, he flew into a rage, glaring balefully at the 36 schools and sects, his murderous intent clear as day. That which they called the right path was still nothing more than this. The young lady had used her life to exchange for a chance at his escape. With the self-righteous 36 schools and sects chasing after him, he went into hiding in Zhonghu. The young man escaped into a temple where he took the tonsure, cutting off his worries as he did his own hair. He stared at the statue of Buddha all day. Finally, he stepped into foundation building a year later and became the chosen lord of the plain. He was neither gleeful nor devastated. He asked Buddha why he had been saved but she had not. Tears of blood streamed down the golden Buddha statue. The Buddhist monk understood and he took his leave from the temple. He roamed the world with the palms of his hand together. He visited all of the 36 schools and sects, one by one, and wiped out every single one of them. All that remained of these places were corpses that littered the ground and blood that had formed a river. With his own methods, he saved the people of this world. The Buddhist monk wiped out the 36 schools and sects before he went back into seclusion. All that was left of him was his legend. And the Buddhist monk understood the true meaning of Buddhism. He cultivated without rest and finally stepped into peak foundation building. Eventually, his world had been invaded by other wanderers and he was defeated in battle, transforming into the evil Buddha and scorching the entire world. Lu Fan opened his eyes. Opposite him, the go piece that the Buddhist monk's soul had transformed into had already disappeared completely. The dream had come to an end, but the scenes were still vivid and clear in his mind. Buddha and evil, a fine line, muttered Lu Fan as he leaned back in his wheelchair. Lu Fan made no criticism on the Buddhist monk's life, he was more focused on the Buddhist cultivation the monk had learned. Buddhist cultivation had existed in the world the entire time, just that it was not exceptionally powerful. And the Buddhist monk had questioned Buddha to acquire the true meaning to this cultivation, thereby acquiring great power, only it attracted wanderers to himself. This ultimately brought about the end to his world and the Buddhist monk was reduced to a wanderer himself. The world should be connected, Buddhist cultivation, perhaps there exists a more profound world of Buddhist cultivation. The world the Buddhist monk roamed was but a drop in the ocean, and perhaps the Buddha he questioned was an existence of the mid-level martial world, perhaps even a high-level martial world, because Buddhist cultivation can also disperse into more profound realms and levels. Lu Fan fell into deep thought. A gold Buddhist prayer bead condensed on the spirit pressure chessboard. This was a Buddhist cultivation fire seed, and Lu Fan had no plans to destroy it. A single cultivation seed was so hard to come by, even a Buddhist prayer bead condensed from low-level Buddhist cultivation was extremely few and far between. Besides, Lu Fan had in his possession the all-method furnace which he could use to deduce the Buddhist Dharma. Lu Fan pocketed the prayer bead, but he did not immediately use the all-method furnace to deduce the Buddhist Dharma. Nor did he continue dealing with the trembling blonde man or the soul of the Lord of Zerong standing by the side. Along with the golden light, he sent them both sinking to the bottom of the lake again. Of course, he was in no hurry. After all, he had just dealt with the Buddhist monk's spirit. He felt a strange wave coming from the Buddhist prayer beads, and that wave seemed like it was coming from a deeper layer of power and will. 
In his wheelchair, Lu Fan's lips quirked up in a smirk. That's rather sinister, trying to save me. But, who in this world could possibly save me? Just as he spoke, Lu Fan lifted his fingers from the arm of his chair. In an instant, a beam of silver light shot forth from the wheelchair. The fog parted, not unlike the sky opening up. The crowd looked in shock as the silver blade cut the Buddha statue into two. As the fog dissipated, Lu Fan sat in his wheelchair and slowly wheeled forward. Young master. Ning Zhao and the rest hurried to bow. It seemed like the young master was really coming out of his retreat this time. Lu Fan scanned the crowd, nodding imperceptibly in acknowledgement. Although he knew the situation like the back of his hand, it was still different seeing it for himself. Hum. Lu Fan looked over at Jing Yu, only to see that he had undergone some sort of change when he was not paying attention. It was a change on a soul level, not only did he have a soul now, but that soul was also sharp as a sword with an edge. He's actually obtained the sword spirit, Lu Fan gripped the arm of his wheelchair gently, somewhat shocked. The sword spirit could affect souls, and some powerful swordsmen could wield souls as blades to wipe out the world. Because he had been condensing the origin of the world, the upper limit of sword spirits in Wuang continent had raised exponentially, and their power was one of a kind. In the past, before the origin of the world had been condensed, the number one sword cultivator of Great Zhou was Sword Saint, Hua Dongliu, who had spent decades before he barely acquired a little of the sword spirit. This was proof of how arduous the journey of sword cultivation was, and how it left people in despair. After he condensed the origin, elements had been created. Sword spirits and elements were intriguing in that they brought about the same end through different means. Of course, enlightenment like sword spirits and knife spirits still remained difficult to acquire, but their upper limits have been increased, so their power could reach terrifying heights. Perhaps when the sword spirit leveled up, the gush of the sword spirit was enough to wipe out the enemy even before one drew their sword. If they condensed spiritual sense, the sword spirit could wound even that. Not bad. Lu Fan nodded at Jing Yu. Jing Yu met Lu Fan's gaze. He had been rather apprehensive right from the start but hearing Lu Fan's praise felt kind of suffocating for Jing Yu. He recovered quickly. It must have been because he had acquired the sword spirit that young master was so pleasantly surprised. He had not let young master down. Lu Fan's praise filled Jing Yu with the same satisfaction he got from eating cold watermelon on a sweltering summer day. Lu Chongkong, LV Dongxuan, and the rest looked like they had something to say, but they held their tongues. They were curious about the anomaly that had occurred before, and whether it was the result of Lu Fan's tinkering. But before they could even speak, it as though Lu Fan knew what they wanted to ask. He raised his hand gently, stopping them with a smile. Anomalies of the world are great immortal encounters designed by immortals, and they change the structure of the world. More accurately, we're only properly crossing over into the era of cultivators after this incident. This incident resulted in the eight dragon gates gushing with spirit chi to open, causing the whole of Great Zhou to be engulfed in it. Some regular people would have become cultivators because of this immortal encounter. This is actually a good thing. Immortal encounters from before were all controlled by the powerful imperial courts, like the South Manor Army from South County, the Shang family's army from West County, and the Black Dragon Guard from the capital city, so on and so forth, these meant there were limitations. Before there were cultivators, there were already spectacular fights in the Great Zhou Dynasty. Now that there are cultivators, as well as thousands of cultivations, won't it be much grander? Lu Fan asked as he looked at Lu Chongkong and the rest of them. With the increase of spiritual sense, it seemed like his words were ringing in their ears. Everyone fell into deep thought. That storm of spirit qi pushed the entire Great Zhou into an era of cultivators? A great fight between cultivators, was young master serious? Was young master unafraid that this great fight between cultivators could affect White Jade City? But the crowd also realized that, with White Jade City's power, they were definitely an entity that could afford to sit out of it, and even manipulate the fight. I know you don't really understand the idea of anomalies of the world. Three days later, I will be at the White Jade City Pavilion to explain the changes brought about by the anomaly of the world. You should have questions about the realm above internal organs realm, right? When the time comes, I will also mention the realm above internal organs realm. These three days are the early stages of this world's transformation, so you'll have to seize the opportunity to cultivate. 
Once you let this period pass, you'll have to wait a long time before you come across an opportunity like this again. Before anyone noticed, Lu Fan had already wheeled himself to the White Jade City Pavilion, heading slowly towards the second floor. Only his voice lingered in their ears. As for the crowd, they barely realized Lu Fan was already on the second floor of the White Jade City Pavilion. They were all shocked by the information Lu Fan had just given them. A realm above internal organs realm. Just what kind of a realm was the realm above internal organs realm? Early stages of this world's transformation? An era of cultivators. Everyone in the crowd turned to look at one another, their eyes gleaming brilliantly. People were always curious about the unknown. Even though they were already cultivators, this much had not changed. LV Dongxuan gripped the giant gold necklace on his neck. He was so agitated that even the beard at the corner of his mouth was trembling. He had a feeling that something big was about to happen again. LV Mudui, prepare the divine paper, Tianji order, said LV Dongxuan with his beard as he looked at LV Mudui who was holding a bamboo cane. LV Mudui's expression changed. Another order. How much blood was he going to cough up this time? Very quickly, LV Mudui found some divine paper. LV Dongxuan let LV Mudui land a blow squarely on his chest, and he coughed up a bowl of blood. He dipped into the bloody ink and started penning the order. This Tianji order was simple. In three days, young master will hold a lecture in White Jade City. LV Dongxuan was solemn as he gripped the brush in one hand and his giant gold necklace in the other, a satisfied smile blooming on his face. Although Lu Fan had only said he would be answering some questions in three days' time. Answering questions. Was that not a lecture? Switching to another form of expression naturally lent the order some elegance and flair. Tianji Pavilion existed to convey the young master's intentions, so how could they simply send out the information in a dry and bland manner? It was important to note that the face of White Jade City was Tianji Pavilion. LV Dongxuan could imagine how much the world would be affected when they sent out a Tianji order. In Bila Lake Island, young master Lu will deliver a sermon. The number one cultivator in the world will talk about the psychological processes of cultivation. All the cultivators would be excited, no? Of course, once the information got out, LV Dongxuan would not bother with it anymore. As for whether the cultivators from all over the world would be able to enter Bailuo's Lake Island, and whether young master would allow them to listen in, that had absolutely nothing to do with him, LV Dongxuan. His only duty as part of Tianji Pavilion was simply to convey young master's intentions. He was not responsible for the business of selling tickets. Liu Chongkong saw the Tianji order LV Dongxuan had written up and could not help but become serious. Evidently, he knew the sort of waves this Tianji order would cause once it was sent out. White Jade City was the number one cultivator powerhouse now. Back then, when they sent out a Tianji order ordering the war to stop, the world ceased the war for three months, and that was a good example of White Jade City's standing. Now, the Lord of White Jade City was about to talk about the psychological processes of cultivation, there was no way all the people wouldn't be shocked. When the time came, Bila City would probably attract hordes of cultivators. But Lu Chongkong lifted his head and looked at Lu Fan who was on the second floor of the pavilion. Lu Fan was leaning against the railing as he gripped a bronze wine cup in his hand, sipping on the good wine. He seemed to have felt Lu Chongkong's gaze. Lu Fan raised his cup suavely, a smile on his face. Lu Chongkong could not help but smile. Ah well, with Lu Fan's temper, even if all the cultivators in the world gathered in Bila, order was not something Lu Chongkong needed to worry about. After all, everyone knew full well the temper of Bailuo's Lu Ping'an. Chapter 185 no calm years in life LV Mudui retrieved several Tianij pigeons that seemed to have gained spirituality and nestled the Tianji order snugly against their bodies. White feathers fluttered down as the Tianji pigeons beat their wings in the white snow. They burst past the barrier that was the curtain of snow and into the thick fog, leaving behind traces not unlike flowing water. LV Dongxuan watched the disappearing pigeons. He gripped his giant gold necklace in hand, his beard quaking as he smiled. On the other side, LV Mudui clutched onto his bamboo stick as he leaned against a peach tree, glaring rather bitterly at LV Dongxuan. That old thing, why did he use his own blood? It looked like he would have to speed up the plan by preparing a bucket of pig's blood. 
Ni Yu continued to refine elixirs as she balanced the black pot in her head. She followed the body tempering elixir recipe that Lu Fan had engraved into the stone, thinking very carefully. She was serious about refining elixirs. Cultivation was out of the question for her, so she could only practice refining elixirs to convince young master that she was not idling. The body tempering elixir was much more difficult to refine than the gathering qi elixir, and there were strict requirements for many of the required herbs. Fortunately, Lu Fan did not restrict Ni Yu when it came to money, so Ni Yu dragged Jing Yu off Lake Island with her once she had finished thinking over the recipe. After some seasickness and vomiting, they reached the inside of Bila City. They immediately searched for the herbs needed in her recipe. On the island, Yi Yu was cultivating as usual. She had heard Lu Fan mention that these three days were still the early stages of this world's transformation and that now was the time to reap the most benefits. Because of this, she wanted to seize the opportunity. Yi Yu was not particularly strong when it came to martial arts, but she was diligent and determined to become stronger. And it was just like Lu Fan had said, these next few days of cultivation would be the absolute best time to do so. This was especially so because of the abundance of spirit qi and because they were on the lake island where the origins were released. Under such circumstances, Yi Yu's qi core realm cultivation would very quickly be completed and she would soon be on the verge of breaking through to the internal organs realm. Because of the emergence of Earth's origin, the difficulty of emerging from the internal organs realm was much weaker than it had been before. The importance of Earth's origin spoke for itself, it made cultivating easier for people of this world as long as they had talent. Besides, it also removed the barrier to cultivation. This made it easier for people to grasp certain aspects of cultivation. This was especially so because Lu Fan had merged elements into the plane's origin, so that the internal organs realm could disperse elements in the future to allow for the world of cultivators to be much more vibrant and diverse. Gong Shu Yu was also cultivating. After all, as a philosopher, he did indeed progress rather quickly when he cultivated. One had to be gifted to become a philosopher after all. But after cultivating for a period of time, Gong Shu Yu slipped into the refining pavilion within the White Jade City Pavilion. He continued with refining weapons. What was cultivation, anyway? How was it any more meaningful than refining weapons? Ning Zhao did not continue cultivating. She stepped into the pavilion and picked up a basket to deposit all the green plums she had washed. She had collected green plums to make wine for Lu Fan. While Lu Fan sat in his wheelchair near the railings, letting the mild breeze blow at him, he toyed with a golden Buddhist prayer bead in his hand. Ni Chongqing followed the Dragon Gate in Bila Lake and stepped out of the one in North County. He was worried about Ni Shang's safety. The war this time was not simple. It could be said to be one amongst cultivators. Whether it had been that Buddhist monk or the blonde man, even someone like Ni Chongqing had to put in all his energy into dealing with them. North County would be a force to be reckoned with the moment such people appeared there. But Ni Chongqing guessed that Li Sansi was probably at North County because they were not too swamped for the moment. Li Sansi probably had powers at the level of the internal organs realm, at the very least. He passed through the central palace and followed the rope. He stepped into the dragon gate of Torch Dragon. Suddenly, a terrifying aura lingered faintly in the dragon gate. Ni Chongqing saw a young lady holding a flute. The young lady's eyes were closed and her hair was in a mess. Looking at this young lady, a bout of anxiety surged in Ni Chongqing's chest as if he were facing something terrifying. This filled Ni Chongqing with shock. It was important to note that he was an elite cultivator who had currently refined the five organs and was capable of condensing a spirit Qi armor. But in the face of this girl, he was very much like a tiny, lonely boat in the vast ocean. Ni Chongqing gathered his wits, then greeted the young lady with a fist and palm salute. I am Ni Chongqing, a disciple of White Jade City. I would like to borrow this path to head towards North County and I seek your understanding, Ni Chongqing said. The flute melody the young lady had been playing stopped in an instant. She put the flute down then waved her hands and said, on behalf of my father, go on. Ni Chongqing was stunned. Although he did not really understand what was going on, he did not hesitate either. With his butcher's knife in hand, he speedily ran along the iron chain bridge and passed through to the floating sky island and out of the dragon gate. After he stepped out of the dragon gate, he saluted the young lady again. Thank you. But the young lady was not paying any attention to him at all. Ni Chongqing was stunned. 
As expected, there were still many powerful existences he was unaware of. This made him all the more cautious, he stepped out of Torch Dragon's Dragon Gate. He made his way down Bujo Mountain, then rushed towards Tianhan Gate. Soon, he was standing right outside Tianhan Gate. Tantai Zong was currently discussing something with Mo Beike and Mo Ju in the house. Suddenly, a scout brought news that slightly startled Tantai Zong who had been in discussion. In robes whiter than snow and a butcher's knife on his waist, the North County soldiers were unable to stop him. Ni Chongqing strode over and hit them with spirit pressure, making it impossible for the crowd around him to stop him. He stepped right in. After Tantai Zan stepped out, he saw Ni Chongqing dressed in white from head to toe. Dressed in clothes whiter than snow, are you a white jade city cultivator? Tantai Zan asked. Wrapped in thick blankets, Mo Beike walked out. He spoke slowly, Ni Chongqing of White Jade City, young master Luz, coachman. Confusion flashed across Tantai Zan's face. It was shocking that even young master Lu's coachman had this sort of power. Ni Chongqing seemed to finally notice Tantai Zan. He turned his head and nodded mildly in agreement. Tantai Zan ordered people to bring Ni Chongqing to where Ni Shuang was being treated. Brother Ni, said Luo Cheng. The moment he saw Ni Chongqing, he stood up hurriedly to greet the other with a fist and palm salute. Uncle Ni, Bai Qingyao seemed to be blaming herself for this. Had it not been for her, Ni Shuang would not have gotten injured. Lil Phoenix One poked its little head out from the gap in Bai Qingyao's shirt. Ni Chongqing glanced at it, scaring Lil Phoenix One until it quietly retreated. Ni Chongqing had an icy expression on his face. He checked Ni Shuang thoroughly before the stern expression on his face finally relaxed. After he listened to Bai Qingyao's account of the war, Ni Qingchong stroked Ni Shuang's face with a complicated expression on his face. Take good care of Shuang'er, Ni Chongqing looked at Bai Qingyao and instructed. When I come back, we will return to White Jade City. Ni Chongqing stood up and left, his butcher's knife in his grip. Where are you going, Uncle Ni? Bai Qingyao was shocked. To take revenge, for Shuang'er, Ni Chongqing's white robes billowed in the wind. He stepped out and floated down the gate tower. Step by step, he walked out into the snow. Knife spirits surrounded him and they cut the snow and wind into shreds. As Ni Shuang's father, how could he stand by and do nothing when his son had been bullied? It was only natural that he would pay them back for what they did. The cultivators of White Jade City, they're all so heroic. Tantai Zan watched as Ni Changing disappeared into the snow, nothing more than a man and his blade, heading towards the depths of the Zerong army in the distance. He could not help the exclamation. In robes whiter than snow, they were all quick to repay their debts of gratitude and vengeance. A mighty cultivator, free as the wind, unshackled by anything. He was rather envious, really. The Tianji order from White Jade City had quickly spread. It reached a tea house in the capital city. The beautiful Qianqin read the Tianji order and her eyes widened in a second. Bila Lake, the young master will be holding a lecture. A simple sentence like this, but she detected something rather unusual from it. The last time White Jade City had sent out a Tianji order, all war had ceased for three months. And now that that order had expired, they were sending a Tianji order like this one. Was there some inevitable connection between these two? The beautiful Qianqin detected spirit Qi in the cinnabar field, as well as a unique airflow lingering in the air, and her eyes gleamed brilliantly. The anomaly that had occurred in the world before, was it? What caused young Master Luz to hold a lecture this time? Was he going to be speaking about this anomaly? In an instant, she found herself anticipating this. She had never been to Bila City, and this time, she wanted to go. She ordered for people to copy the Tianji order and circulate it. When the Tianji order circulated, the world was shocked yet again. Bila Lake, and the young master would be giving a lecture. The number one cultivator in the world would be giving a lecture was news that agitated all the cultivators in the world. The road of cultivation was a long and arduous one with no end in sight. With guidance, it would certainly be a lot shorter, and one might even grasp the true meaning of cultivation. Because of this, after receiving the news of the Tianji order, a lot of people moved and hurried towards Bila. In an instant, Bila city had become the focus of the world yet again. 
The thing was, last time, it had been because four philosophers had challenged young Master Lu. And this time, it was actually because young Master Lu was going to be holding a lecture. On the road from the capital city to Dongyang County. The road was bumpy and snow fell heavily. The coachman had on a bamboo hat and cotton clothes. He huffed out a hot sigh as he shivered. He rode his horse, moving down the path slowly. In the carriage, the master had a bamboo slip in his grip. Under the light that shone in through the window, he was reading the contents of the bamboo slip and was deep in thought. Mo Tianyu sat in the horse carriage with him, he seemed somewhat uneasy. He had done divination for the master in the book pavilion. The hexagram had been great. Logically speaking, Mo Tianyu should be relieved, and yet, he was always feeling conflicted and unable to be put at ease, because the more he thought about it, the more panicked he would be. His divination, was it truly reliable? Ever since the trip to Bila City, Mo Tianyu's divinations had never seemed to hit the mark. Time and time again he had wanted to prove himself, but time and time again he had failed terribly. It's going to go great, it definitely will. Mo Tianyu clenched the three copper coins in his fist and took in a deep breath. The master glanced over at Mo Tianyu in the carriage. On his wrinkled face bloomed a humorless smile. Tianyu, the master said, in this world of infinite things, which is quite interesting in itself, there exists a rather curious rule. The more frightened you are of something, the more likely things will unfurl as you fear. So you have to keep a calm mentality. With a good attitude, even bad things will become good. The coachman traveled slowly through the wind and snow. The wheels of the carriage carved out two gullies in the snow. Shakily and slow, it traveled quite a distance in the snow. When the carriage finally entered the perimeter of Dongyang County, the master drew the curtains with a rather somber look on his face. Dongyang County was facing the invasion of the Dongyi people. Master could tell that almost all of the people had been drafted into the army, and a tense atmosphere lingered in the air. In comparison to the various counties that were brimming with cultivators, there were extremely few, almost no, cultivators in Dongyang County. Although Dongyang County had their own dragon gate, only the gates that could be used were referred to as such. The unusable ones were more dangerous if anything, and they were referred to as death gates. Because they could not use dragon gates to train cultivators, Dongyang County could only draw strength from their numbers in their retaliation against the Dongyi people, falling back to the most primitive of battle tactics. However, the cursed thing about this was that the Dongyi people had cultivators on their side. Because of this, the battle was all the more tragic. Dongyang County could not fall. After all, there were too many civilians living there, so the mayor ordered for a full force resistance against Dongyi's invasion. At this moment, the sun had just begun to rise. There was still snow about the size of goose feathers still falling from the clouds. The Dongyang County mayor was dressed in top-grade armor. He rushed over quickly from the Dongyang County border. Imperial advisor. The Dongyang County mayor was no hulking beast of a man. On the contrary, he was a rather elegant and refined middle-aged man with a long beard and eyes that slightly tilted up at the ends. He was visibly overwhelmed as he spotted Kong Shu sitting in the horse carriage. The master ordered the coachman to halt the carriage. With Mo Tianyu's help, he stepped out of the car in a heavy coat. Kong Shu greeted the Dongyang County Mayor with a fist and palm salute. Did His Majesty specifically send the Imperial Advisor here to help because he read my letter? The Dongyang County Mayor asked, somewhat anticipatory. Kong Shu was stunned. After a beat, there was a smile on his wrinkled face. Yes, it was His Majesty who had me sent here to assist Dongyang County. Mo Tianyu, who was standing by the side, stared at Master in shock. The Dongyang County Mayor smiled excitedly when he heard this. He led the Master towards the frontier city. On the way there, there were Dongyang County soldiers huddled up under the ice-cold, sturdy city walls. Some of them were still dripping blood, others had lost their arms and were wrapped up in bandages. These are all the injured soldiers. Surviving the battle is quite the feat in itself, and a lot of soldiers are dead. This battle is simply too arduous. The scum from Dong Yi, they're much stronger than they were in previous years, and they have really strange techniques this time, plus they're not afraid of death. We can only hold fast, but, I don't know how much longer we can do this. The Dongyang County Mayor was Yang Mu. He was part of the Yang family, the Dongyang aristocracy. He led the imperial advisor up the gate tower. 
Snow had fallen all over the gate tower, so some soldiers shoveled it off to the city below. These should be the cultivators the other counties speak of. They're terrifying indeed, and they're able to actually control a fight. If not for my many soldiers and generals who are also not afraid of death and the ones who guard this city with their lives, then perhaps Dongyang County would have already fallen. The Dongyi army might have invaded Dongyang by now, which would have been a great calamity, Yang Mu, the Dongyang County mayor, spoke with great emotion. The master's face was solemn as he nodded. On his way here, he had seen the many injured soldiers. He had also seen some first and second rate martial artists who had either lost an arm or a leg. The master heaved a long and heavy sigh. This was only what he could see. There were also soldiers he did not see, most likely they were already buried beneath the snow. There were no calm years in life, just people who have to bear the burden in your stead. Mo Tianyu followed behind the master, his face growing increasingly somber. Master, Mo Tianyu opened his mouth as he began to say. However, the master only waved his hands, stopping Mo Tianyu from speaking. Mo Tianyu's heart seized. Oh no, this was bad. His divination was about to be proven wrong yet again. Chapter 186. But where were the reinforcements? South County. The battle outside of Nanjin City had ended for the moment. However, that mysterious strong man from Nanmen was still alive. Therefore, Nanjin City still maintained a strong defensive front. It was drizzling. Sima Qingshan and Tang Yimo were standing on the city tower of Nanjin City. Those from Dao Pavilion and Sword Pavilion had all left. The current Nanjin City was a little desolate and awful. Up on the city tower, you could even smell the strong scent of blood spreading between the city towers. Tang Yimo thought Sima Qingshan had great potential as a cultivator since he had seen the latter getting saved by Ni Chongqing. He recommended that Sima Qingshan cultivate in the Dragon Gate. By then, Sima Qingshan had made some achievements of his own. Tang Yimo did not think there were wizards in the world. However, as soon as he saw Sima Qingshan, he realized that this man was indeed a wizard. From painting to cultivation, he combined two completely different expertise together. He did have the help from an immortal encounter, but without extraordinary talent and aptitude, he would not have achieved what he had achieved. Qingshan, are you really leaving? Tang Yimo looked at Sima Qingshan. He took a deep breath. It was raining lightly, but he felt kind of cold. Cultivation is a long journey. My painting is only the first peek through the door of this area. It is a rare opportunity for White Jade City's young master Lu to impart cultivation. I might go to consult him something, Sima Qingshan said. Lu Ping'an is the number one cultivator in the world. I'm sure he will give me advice on how to improve. In three days, the whole world had heard of Tianji Pavilion's Tianji order. The entire world knew Lu Ping'an would deliver a lecture. The whole world had been shocked. Cultivators or not, everyone headed for Bila. They all thought they might be able to gain some insights from the lecture and even become cultivators themselves. The current world was cultivator's world. Anyone who became a cultivator would naturally attain a higher status. Certainly, this was what ordinary people thought. Some cultivators were drawn to Bila because of the hopes that young Master Lu might share his knowledge regarding cultivation, which would be vital for everyone who cultivated. It was like a chess master consenting to impart skills and tricks to all chess disciples. Chess disciples would certainly be crazily excited about that opportunity because it was a really good chance to learn something. The news spread far and wide in just two days. Sima Qingshan said goodbye to Tang Yimo. The painter left Nanjin City for Bila on a horse. Tang Yimo did not go because he had to guard Nanjin City. Nanmen's army had retreated but the cunning Nanmen people might come back again for a sneak attack. It was hard to say what they would do. Watching Sima Qingshan disappearing from his sight, Tang Yimo let out a sigh. He could not stop Sima Qingshan from improving himself, but it was a fact that Tang Yimo could teach him nothing, since what Sima Qingshan learned was not martial arts techniques. On the other hand, the mysterious young master Lu might be able to teach him what he wanted to know. Not long after Sima Qingshan left, a scout drenched by the rain bolted towards him from outside the city. Commander. Dongyang County is under siege from Dongyi's army. They are in danger and asked for South County's help, the scout said. In the rain, Tang Yimo turned around. Water splattered loudly as the rain pattered on his armor. They asked for South County's help. 
Why don't they ask for the capital's help? Tang Yimo's eyes narrowed. The scout was dumbstruck. After coming to his senses, he said, Commander, according to the scout from the capital city, Dongyang County did ask for the capital city's help, but the capital city didn't respond to their request for aid. Did not respond to their request for aid? Now Tang Yimo was dumbstruck. His face trembled slightly. He understood why. Send a hundred troops from South Manor Army and 20,000 soldiers to reinforce Dongyang County. If the capital city refuses to help, we, South County will help. At such a time, the stupid emperor is still thinking about weakening all counties. Tang Yimo smiled coldly. An emperor who had never been in a desperate war knew nothing about the cruelty of war. All he could come up with was schemes and intrigues to excite his boring palace life. Tang Yimo held him in disdain for that. With Tang Xiansheng as his teacher, Tang Yimo had formed his own judgment on the state of the world. Therefore, he guessed easily the reason the capital city had not responded. He looked up. The cold rain pattered down on his face. Tang Yimo gave the order immediately and without hesitation. Capital city. Two horses came forward slowly. The people on the horses were traveling against the storm. The ancient city tower of the capital was mottled and stained by time. The land where it was built had countless bones buried underground. Zhang Li took off his bamboo hat and shook the snow off of it. He looked at the ancient city tower with a complicated facial expression. Next to him, Kai Lian also took off her bamboo hat. Lord, are we really going? Kai Lian looked worried. Isn't it good for me to resign and go back to the countryside? Looking at Kai Lian, Zhang Li burst out laughing. Kai Lian was dumbstruck. She hurried to wave her hands. Lord, I didn't mean that. However, the current capital city is a dangerous place. You want to resign and go back to the countryside, but the emperor probably won't agree with you. Zhang Li extended his hand. A snowflake fell on it. Mount injured, armor broken, bloodshed wherever I pass. Who exactly am I fighting for? It's better to take off this armor and go back to the countryside, making a pot of tea and eating some chicken soup. Zhang Li smiled. It was a smile of disappointment. North County's army was tough, and they gained much courage and upstanding from years of experience guarding the frontier. Zhang Li had thought that with his ability, he could make the army of the capital city as great as the North County or the South County's army. However, now he realized no matter how hard he tried, it would not be possible. He might be able to make the capital city's army strong, however, when it came to courage and morals, North County and South County's army was at a standard beyond the comprehension of the capital city's army. Zhang Li was a little lost because he did not think he had any chance of winning. Besides, the little emperor fished in troubled waters. Zhang Li really disliked that. He was even a little irritated by it. General, I've finally realized why you were so disappointed and sad that day under the setting sun. Zhang Li murmured. The snow on the palm of his hand melted. Water flowed down. He recalled how Bai Function had let out a helpless sigh on his horse in the desert. At last, he turned the horse into the capital city. Kai Lian followed him. Outside the capital city, Kong Nanfei was expecting him with the Black Dragon Guard. His eyes lit up as soon as he saw Zhang Li. General Zhang, I'm glad you are back. Kong Nanfei, in a Confucius robe, patted Zhang Li on his shoulder. Kong Nanfei really admired and respected Zhang Li. Zhang Li smiled. He glanced at the Black Dragon Guard behind Kong Nanfei. He saw the enthusiasm in their eyes. Kai Lian, you stay here, Zhang Li said. Take care of Qingniao if I don't come back. Next to him, Kai Lian's long eyelashes trembled. Panic showed on her pretty face. Lord, Kai Lian will go with you. No do what I told you. You are the only person I can still trust. Zhang Li looked at Kai Lian seriously. Kai Lian wanted to say no, but in the end, she did not say anything. Kong Nanfei also sensed something was not quite right. Brother Zhang, however, Zhang Li only waved his hand at Kong Nanfei. He said nothing to the latter. He walked to the imperial city in the snow. Kong Nanfei was in a daze. Looking at the man staggering through the heavy snow, Kong Nanfei felt a lump grow in his throat. Maybe, except for the banana leaves bent over by the weight of snow before Book Pavilion, everything and everyone in the capital city had changed. Kong Nanfei was a little dazed. It was freezing cold in the ancient capital city. He looked at the sky. 
It was snowing heavily. All the grass had frosted over. Zhang Li was walking very cautiously. One step after another, he walked unhurriedly, as if he was just measuring the land or feeling the pulse of the ancient city. On the avenue in the imperial city, some ministers walking slowly through the snow saw Zhang Li. Their eyes lit up. Zhang Li's position in Great Zhou Dynasty was unquestionable. As the imperial advisor declined, Zhang Li was regarded as the most important minister in Great Zhou. The ministers came up to Zhang Li to greet him. They had heard Zhang Li had been imprisoned in North County. It surprised them to find that he had come back. Was it because the little emperor's strategy had worked? Did Tantai Zan acknowledge the mistake he made to the Great Zhou Dynasty? The ministers wondered. Zhang Li glanced at them, but he looked very cold. In Zijin Palace, the long corridor went on and on. The tall, carved wooden door was open. Young eunuchs were standing in a bow in front of it. Zhang Li took his black cloak off. He gave his bamboo hat to a eunuch at the door. He entered Zijin Palace after shaking the snow off his back. The morning meeting started on time. Yuan Shu, in a silk dragon robe, was sitting upright in the dragon throne. He was listening to the minister's reports with a mild smile. Your Majesty, White Jade City issued another Tianji order. Young Master Lu from Bila will lecture on cultivation at the lakeside of Bila Lake, a minister reported to Yu Wen Shu with a bow. Minister Lu is the number one cultivator in the world. Because he will be lecturing about cultivation at the lakeside of Bila Lake, we certainly won't miss it. We will send our bodyguards to take notes of everything Minister Lu says, Yu Wen Shu said slowly from the dragon throne. The minister who had made the report was about to add something. However, at the mention of Yu Wen Shu's bodyguards, he trembled and stopped speaking. Yu Wen Shu's bodyguards were the 13 Black Dragon armored men, who were very famous in the capital city. The Black Dragon Guard was led and directed by Kong Nanfei and Zhang Li. However, the 13 Black Dragon armored men were not under the control of Kong Nanfei and Zhang Li. On top of that, they could even command the Black Dragon Guard. Yes. The minister cupped his hands and then went back to his seat. Not until then did Yu Wen Shu look up and fix his eyes on Zhang Li. He got to his feet from the dragon throne with a big smile. General Zhang, you are finally back. Tang Xiansheng, that old fox. We couldn't believe he collaborated with North County to scheme against you. It was our fault that General Zhang was imprisoned. We didn't consider the matter thoroughly. How are you, General Zhang? When General Zhang recovers, we will send a punitive expedition against South County to revenge you. Yu Wen Shu came up to Zhang Li. Zhang Li cupped his hands and bowed. Thank you, Your Majesty. I am good. We are glad you are safe. It's thanks to General Zhang that the Black Dragon Guard came into existence. General Zhang is really the person we need most at the moment. Yu Wen Shu smiled. General Zhang, the post of Black Dragon Guard's chief commander is still yours. Your Majesty, Zhang Li interrupted Yu Wen Shu all of a sudden. The air in the court was suddenly charged with tension. General Zhang, you disagree? Yu Wen Shu asked with a sharp look at Zhang Li. The smile on his face was fading. Your Majesty, I feel physically and mentally exhausted by this expedition. I am eager to resign and return to the countryside to spend the rest of my life in peace. I hope Your Majesty will agree, said Zhang Li, bowing. He looked up at Yu Wen Shu. Yu Wen Shu's facial expression kept changing, but he settled on a smile in the end. General Zhang, you must be tired from your travels. I agree that General Zhang should take a few days off, but forget about resigning and going back to the countryside. Your country is in danger. General Yang's support is fundamental for the country. Yu Wen Shu waved his hand. Then, he turned around to walk back to the dragon throne. In the distance, the old eunuch turned pale. Below him, the other minister's eyes dilated involuntarily. Those who had talked to Zhang Li turned extremely pale. If they had known Zhang Li had come back to resign, they would never have tried to befriend him even if they were forced to. Once the emperor's black dragon bodyguards learned they had been friendly to Zhang Li, their heads might hang from the city tower of the capital city. The mere thought of such a consequence made some ministers go weak at the knees, they flopped onto the ground. Yu Wen Shu glanced over at these ministers after sitting back into the dragon throne. A cold smile emerged on his face. Below him, cupping his hands, Zhang Li only looked at Yu Wen Shu calmly. 
Your Majesty, I insist on resigning and going back to the countryside. When that had been said in the court where the air was charged with tension, a cold laugh burst out and lingered. Bang! On the dragon throne, Yu Wen Shu pounded the chair arm. The sound was as shocking as a thunderbolt. It felt like the entire palace was shaking. The hall was instantly thick with tension. Dongyang County was close to the sea. The Dongyi people were natives from islands that bordered Dongyang County on the sea. They were uncivilized. The Dongyi people were water dogs. They were good at building a kind of long narrow wooden boats. They would arrive at the beach of Dongyang County on these boats when they invaded Dongyang County. There were 18 big or small islands on the sea. The Great Zhou Dynasty called all of them Dongyi. When the sun had risen from the horizon, boat hoisted their sails one after another and moved downwind, towards the coastline of Dongyang County. On Dongyang County's beach, cavalry scouts moving around on horses turned pale. They had seen this too many times. The appearance of those boats indicated an impending attack of Dongyi's army. The scouts acted right away. They took off the bronze horns they had been carrying at their waists and blew them with effort. They made such a great effort that their faces blushed. The air from their mouths impacted the thick walls of the bronze horns. The vibration produced a thick sound that lingered in the air. Other scouts further up the beach turned pale when they heard the horns. They blew their horns as well. In this way, the information was passed on to the frontier city of Dongyang County. The soldiers in the frontier city reacted immediately. They entered the emergency state right away. On the city tower, Dongyang County's mayor Yang Miu was walking with the imperial advisor and Mo Tianyu. He was as pale as a ghost when he heard the horns. Damn. The Dongyi army is attacking again. Mayor Yang Miu gnashed his teeth. He looked resolute and ferocious. It looks we, Dongyang County, can't count on the capital city's reinforcements. He let out a sigh. Yang Miu unsheathed his long knife. In a fine armor, he went to the front line. The sun rising from the horizon cracked the quiet darkness. Sunlight spilled on the cold and mottled city wall of Dongyang's frontier city. Dongyang County's mayor Yang Miu excused himself from the presence of Imperial Master Kong Shu. Then, he led the army in person with his generals toward the coastline to prepare for the beachhead battle. Thousands of wooden boats came from the sea. Shouting from their boats, the Dongyi people pulled their bowstrings and shot one arrow after another. The arrows coming from downwind were even more devastating. On the beach, Dongyang County's army led by Mayor Yang Miu lifted their heavy bronze shields one after another. The shields were thick. His archers pulled their bowstrings and shot arrows too. After a few rounds of shooting, the first boat arrived at the shore. Some of the Dongyi people on the boats had been shot by the arrows and were already dead. But many more of them swarmed onto the shore like ants armed with weapons. More arrows were shot. The Dongyi people were pelted with so many arrows that they looked like hedgehogs. But their arrows also retaliated. Many soldiers of Dongyang County lost their lives in this battle. Yang Miu snarled, waving his knife. His voice was already hoarse. Attack. One after another, the wooden boats came. More of the Dongyi people charged onto the shore with mad cries. Beachhead battles were always cruel and dirty. Blood flowed everywhere. The beach was stained red. These spooky Dongyi people who were not afraid of death charged into the shield formation of Dongyang County's army and burrowed an opening. Then, countless of the Dongyi people swarmed through the opening. In this way, like a levee breach, the opening instantly burst open and the shield formation fell apart. In the end, they had no choice but to engage in close combat. The two armies fought each other closely. On the city tower, Mo Tianyu turned pale at the sight. He was so pale that it was as if all of his blood had been drawn out. He had never seen such a bloody scene before. Standing on the city tower, the hunchbacked master watched the battle. His wrinkled face seemed to be shocked. He let out a sigh after a long time had passed. Bai Function commanded the death of 300,000 Zerong soldiers. I said it was cruel. But now I realize that Bai Function was right. Those not of our kin surely have a different mind. This is a war of nations, kindness is a luxury. It shouldn't exist on battlefields. He let out a sigh. Yang Mu was still expecting the capital city's reinforcements. However, when would they arrive? Down on the beach, Dongyang County's army lost the beachhead battle. 
The city gate of Dongyang's frontier city was left vulnerable and open. The soldiers on the city tower pulled their bowstrings and prepared the crossbows. Some newly recruited soldiers who still looked like children could not help but tremble because of fear. Their eyes were completely red. That was the adrenaline of war. Yang Mu, covered with blood, retreated into the frontier city with the remnant of his soldiers. Shoot! Yang Mu snarled as soon as he entered the city, pulling on the reins of his horse. They would try their best to fight this battle to guard the frontier city. If the Dong Yi people lost, they would simply start over and attack the frontier city again. However, if they lost, their city would be captured, and their people would be killed. Dead bodies were everywhere outside the frontier city. Master was standing atop the city tower. His robe was fluttering. He was looking at the arrows. All of a sudden, Master's eyes narrowed. He looked towards the sea, which was far away. There, a boat was sailing slowly. At the head of the boat, a giant man was standing. His clasped hands were elegantly placed on his belly. His eyes made out his black robe from the city gate in the morning sunshine. A smile lifted the corners of the man's lips, he had failed to capture South County. However, Dongyang County was easy prey. The giant man had sensed that there was not even one cultivator in Dongyang County's army. Hiding in the dark, he sent Dong Yi's army to try them many times. He would not launch any attack until he confirmed that there were no cultivators. He had to win this battle. After he had taken this city and entered Great Zhou, he would be able to use Dong Yi's army to try the strength of the Lord of the Plain. If this Lord of the Plain was really just taking advantage of the origin to throw his own weight about as he wanted to, that would be his chance. All of a sudden, very vaguely, the giant man in the black robe felt a little bit threatened. On the far-off city tower stood a hunchbacked old man in a Confucius robe, looking at him calmly. Chapter 187. The Master Defending the Country's Border. The Tianji Order caused a disturbance in the whole world. This was another grand event after the hundred schools of philosophy challenged Lu Ping'an from Bila. Bila City remained at the center of the grand event. Lu Chongkong was not in armor. He was standing on the city tower in civilian clothes, a thick cloak draping over his shoulders. Luo Yu, carrying his knife, stood behind him. A row of Bai Luo's Dragonblood army was standing at the head of the city tower, looking over at the boundless plains outside Bila City. It was snowing. Every soldier in the Dragonblood army gave off strong energy. It was not only the aura of spirit qi, but also the Dragonblood qi from the Dragon's Blood elixir. This was a real elite army, an army strong enough to be a trump card. An army that could not be outshined by South County's South Manor Army, West County's Shang Family's Army, or the capital city's Black Dragon Guard. On the boundless plain outside of Bila City, the land was covered in snow. The bare branches of the few old trees on the plains were bent over by the weight of snow. As horses galloped by, snow was shaken off the trees, spilling on the ground. Before Bila City, Many people were traveling on the state highway covered in snow. They were cultivators from all over the world. The anomaly of the world that happened a few days ago had created many cultivators. They had just achieved the Qi core realm and had not gotten any cultivation methods, but they still could be called cultivators. These people were very excited to hear about Lu Fan's lecture on cultivation. They came to Bila City from all over the world. Some of them were young masters from aristocratic families. They came with their servants, who carried their luggage for them. It was a big fanfare. They would cup hands and greet each other when they met other cultivators who were also young masters from aristocratic families on the way. Then, they would travel together to Bila. There were martial arts practitioners from the Zhonghu people as well, but this time, they were real martial arts practitioners. Not the same ruffians of last time at all. It was surprising that the cultivators who came to Bila also included some youngsters from poor families. They captured spirit qi in the anomaly of the world. When they heard about young master Lu's lecture on cultivation, they came in groups. They wore torn clothes that had been patched up over and over again, carrying luggage on their own. They did not have horses. It was winter, but they were still wearing straw shoes. Step by step, they headed off on a hard journey towards Bila with a resolute heart. All kinds of cultivators assembled in Bila. Many people saw the magnificent Bila from far away. Looking at Bila City shrouded in abundant spirit qi, they felt like they had seen an immortal land. They were all amazed. 
Some Confucius students even recited poems involuntarily. Certainly, when these people had been before the city gates of Bila, they did not have the nerve to become unbridled again. Bila City was not a place where people could be unbridled. The whole world had heard of the shocking incident of ruffians getting killed here. People applauded Bila for it, but they were also terrified. Bila City seemed all the more mysterious and powerful to them. Many cultivators saw Lu Chongkong and the Dragonblood Army on the city tower. The abundant blood and qi, as well as the tremendous spirit pressure oppressed the cultivators before the city gate to such an extent that it took a great effort to go through the city gate. Two soldiers from the Dragonblood Army questioned the visitors. No one dared to refuse, because some Zhonghu people who had refused their questioning were subdued by Dragonblood Army's knives and imprisoned in Bila City's dungeon after some struggling. A cultivator's army. This was the first time civilians had seen a cultivator's army. They were even more shocked when they had entered Bila City. There was an abundance of spirit qi. They literally thought they had arrived at an immortal land. Many young masters from aristocratic families did not want to leave. They planned to buy a house in Bila City, no matter how much it would cost them. However, they were told houses and lands in Bila City were not for sale. At last, they all came to Bila Lake. White Jade City was somewhere on the lake. Many people were attracted to this place because of its reputation. They stood on the shore, staring. Looking at the pavilion on the island that could only be vaguely seen amidst the abundant spirit chi, they were really amazed. On top of the city tower, Lu Chongkong squinted, he looked into the distance. Some armored horsemen had appeared. Lu Chongkong's eyes narrowed. An imperceptible shrewd light flashed in his eyes. They were the emperor's bodyguards, the thirteen black dragon armored men. Horses were galloping at full speed and snow splattered everywhere. Horses neighed. The leader of the pack was a man in black light armor. His energy was strong. He was probably at the peak of the Qi core realm. He did not get off his horse. Instead, he remained on horseback. Ten odd more black armored horsemen were behind him. However, their light armor and the leader's light armor had different designs. Their leader was the emperor's bodyguard, one of the thirteen black dragon armored men. The others were all regular black dragon guards. Pulling in the reins, the leader squinted. Many pedestrians before the city gate were scared out of the way. After all, these black dragon guards had a reputation of being ferocious and cruel. They would kill people without blinking an eye. Most importantly, the spirit chi pressure from these black dragon guards really freaked out the cultivators who were yet strong. Make way. Black dragon guard is traveling by. Idlers go away. Two black dragon guards jumped off their horses. They were clearing the way. The cultivators from all over the world crowded before the city gate were instantly pushed aside. The black dragon guards even pushed some of the poorer cultivators in straw shoes to the other side of the state highway. One such cultivator fell. He got to his feet from the snow-covered ground, angry but not daring to say anything. The black dragon guard leader was riding his horse in a slow canter. He came to the city tower. Lu Chongkong, in his Confucius robes, followed by Luo Yu, went down the city tower. Several soldiers from the Dragonblood army were standing with their knives. I'm Lu Dao, the thirteenth armored man from the thirteen black dragon armored men. Nice to meet you, city lord Lu. The leader cupped his hands on the horseback when he saw Lu Chongkong. Lu Chongkong slightly frowned. Behind him, Luo Yu squinted at the black armored leader. You are already in Bila City. Get off your horse, Luo Yu yelled. The black dragon guards behind Lu Dao hesitated. Finally, they got off their horses, but the leader, Lu Dao, did not. Lu Dao cupped his hands at Lu Chongkong. He said with a smile, City Lord Lu, His Majesty sent me here to record young Master Lu's lecture on cultivation. Unless young Master Lu is here in person, I won't get off my horse. When that had been said, it was instantly super quiet before the city tower. Then, the air was charged with tension. The wind and snow felt like iron knives. Around them, the cultivators who had come to Bila for the lecture started to talk about it in a low voice. The poor cultivators who had been pushed away stared at the leader in anger. Lu Chongkong did not speak. However, Luo Yu's mouth hung open and his eyes were startled. He unsheathed the knife he had been carrying at the waist right away. You son of a bitch! What did you say? Luo Yu flew into a rage. 
Liu Dao acted like he was superior to the rest. But who the heck was he? How dare he be so rude to Liu Chongkong, the city lord of Bila? Liu Dao squinted. The black dragon guards immediately unsheathed their knives. The air turned cold and tense all of a sudden. The dragon blood army behind Luo Yu also unsheathed their weapons. The two parties were facing down. The clash of their energies drove the wind and snow away. Liu Dao, in his black armor, looked extremely cold. As the emperor's bodyguard, one of the thirteen black dragon armored men, he was favored by the emperor and learned Dao from the black dragon. In this way, he had become enlightened and learned a killing movement. His strength improved a lot. So, he stood out from the competitive black dragon guard and joined the thirteen black dragon armored men. His fame soared in the capital city. Any minister would have to treat him with respect when they saw him. He killed many ministers, too. Therefore, Liu Dao became proud. He knew Bila City was powerful. After all, the number one cultivator power, White Jade City, was headquartered in Bila City. However, Liu Dao, who had learned Dao from the Black Dragon, felt worthy of Bila City. He would be able to do whatever he wanted in Bila City, unless White Jade City's disciples acted against him. Besides, he was there on behalf of Yuan Shu, the emperor. Why should he get off his horse? Liu Chengkong smiled. I've heard that his majesty's thirteen black dragon armored men are like monsters in the capital city, that a lot of people were killed and everyone living in the capital city is afraid of you. Seeing what I am seeing now, I believe it's true, Liu Chengkong said. Liu Dao squinted. Now that city lord Liu has agreed, please let us enter the city, Liu Dao said. The smile on Liu Chongkong's face faded and vanished a little. That being said, the capital city is the capital city, and Bila is Bila. Even if his majesty had come in person, his majesty would get off his horse at the sight of me, you are just a bodyguard. Who gave you the guts and confidence to defy? Try remaining on horseback and see what happens, Liu Chongkong said. As soon as he finished speaking, the air in Bila city was charged with even more tension. All the soldiers from Dragon Blood Army looked ready to kill Liu Dao. Liu Dao lifted his head slowly, he stared at Liu Chongkong. His black armor started to tremble slightly. Spirit Qi was flowing into his qi core. It sounded like the black dragon's low chime. Liu Chongkong, poof. All of a sudden, as soon as Liu Dao spoke, he was suddenly as pale as a ghost, because a dreadful pressure suddenly befell him. The spirit qi flowing in his body became stagnant in an instant. He could not even mobilize it. How dare a nobody like you call my father by his name? A flat voice said. It lingered around the city tower. The dreadful pressure felt as heavy as a giant mountain. Liu Dao's eyeballs were almost popping out of his eye sockets. He was terrified. He despaired. This pressure was even more dreadful than the pressure from His Majesty's Black Dragon. Then, a silver ray of light flew across the sky like a shooting star. It showed up all of a sudden and flew around the city gate. However, before anyone could come to themselves, it vanished. As if, it never appeared, and this was just an illusion. However, blood splattered from Liu Dao's neck while he was still sitting atop his horse. He looked astonished and terrified. His head flew into the sky when the silver ray of light had vanished. The dead body in light armor fell off the horse. Luo Yu, unsheathing his knife, paused involuntarily. Looking at Liu Dao's dead body, Liu Chongkong was also shocked. Was that Liu Fan's voice? Ha ha ha, how dare you look down on the city lord of Bila. Our young master always protects his family and friends, he'll kill you without any warning. Luo Yu burst out laughing immediately. Liu Chongkong also smiled. He looked back in the direction of Lake Island. His son would certainly protect him. Keep the others in the dungeon, Liu Chongkong, said to a soldier next to him with his hands behind his back. Send a message back to His Majesty. Black Dragon Guard Liu Dao was killed for offending the city lord of Bila. The other Black Dragon Guards will be sent back to the capital city when the lecture on cultivation is over. The soldier left to carry out the order right away. Luo Yu waved his hand to command the Dragonblood army to act. Pointing at the Black Dragon Guards, he said with a cold smile, Tie them all up. The disturbance before the city gate vanished. People had thought it would be a severe clash and cause a great disturbance. However, it ended so fast. They thought that Lu Dao would pose a big threat. After all, he was the emperor's bodyguard. 
However, he was killed in three seconds. What a tragedy. It was said that young Master Lu had acted in person, as expected. Rumor had it that young Master Lu was really bad tempered, and it turned out to be true. Instantly, the cultivators from all over the world became all the more careful not to cause even the slightest trouble. Lake Island, Bila. On the second floor of White Jade City's pavilion. Lu Fan watched the snowfall by the railings. The flying snow was pleasing to his eyes. Ning Zhao was heating green plum wine in the snow. With her hair hanging over her shoulders, she looked very gentle. A silver ray of light flew over from far away. It stopped before Lu Fan. Falling slowly, it entered the wheelchair. Killing Lu Dao was nothing to Lu Fan. Lu Fan would always protect people close to him, no matter what they had done. Ni Shuang was hurt by the punch of the Lord of Xirong, so Lu Fan swatted the latter to death. Of course, he would deal with Lu Dao, who looked down on Lu Chengkong. However, Lu Fan was surprised by the energy in Lu Dao's body. The Black Dragon's energy. Lu Fan raised his eyebrow. He tapped the arm of his wheelchair. He had not paid any attention to the Black Dragon for some time. However, judging from Lu Dao's energy, this little thing seemed to be on a narrower path. He stopped thinking about it. Three days had passed. He had promised to explain the anomaly of the world to people, and it was time to do it. And it was time to guide the development of cultivators for the Zhonghu people as well. He would like to realize a cultivator's version of the hundred schools of philosophy before this world became a mid-level martial world. Dongyang County. On the city tower of the frontier city. Mayor Yang Emu's armor had broken into pieces. He was covered in blood. He climbed onto the city wall to direct the army. The battle to defend the city was difficult. Some of these Dongyi people were very strange. They were unafraid of death. They climbed the walls barehanded. They did not retreat even though they were struck by knives or swords or hit by giant rocks, and not even when their heads had been smashed and tilted. They just kept climbing, in defiance of death. This made the city defense much more difficult. Imperial advisor, retreat into the city, please. It's too dangerous here, Dongyang County Mayor Yang Mu said to Kong Shu. Mo Tianyu's face, after turning white, regained color and became ruddy, as if he had found courage, too. These soldiers showed so much courage in defending their city. They were fearless in the face of death. This made Mo Tianyu feel brave, too. He wanted to unsheathe a sword and charge into the enemies to kill them too. However, at the thought of the master, Mo Tianyu restricted himself. He said to the imperial advisor, Master, let's leave first. It's safer in the city. However, the imperial advisor Kong Shu waved his hand. He looked at the large, elegant man standing on the small boat far away. Dongyang County Mayor Yang Mu and Mo Tianyu were shocked when he rejected their advice. Yang Mu frowned. Imperial advisor, please leave the city tower. I can't let anything happen to you. The imperial advisor was an important Confucianist of the country. If something happened to him in Dongyang County, Yang Mu would certainly be the one to blame. Mo Tianyu panicked. He thought of the hexagram he had read before leaving. The hexagram for the master and the book pavilion was a great blessing. Great blessing? That was bullsh asterisk T. Cold sweat almost rolled down Mo Tianyu's forehead. Why should I retreat? The imperial advisor Kong Shu said slowly. Aren't the lives of those soldiers who are protecting the country equally precious? They might have parents waiting for them to at the door every day, virtuous wives eager to see them again and young kids waiting for them to show up so that they can grow up with their parents, they are many people's hopes. Aren't their lives more precious than mine? Why must I be the one to retreat? The master said in a calm voice. Calm but powerful. Yang Mu was shocked. His hand shook. Mo Tianyu instantly turned pale. The old hunchbacked master in his eyes appeared to be straight-backed again. His senility and lethargy were completely gone. He seemed to be the young man who had visited the hundred schools of philosophy once more. Boom. Shapeless Qi assembled over the frontier city all of a sudden and formed some thick clouds. The master smiled. He was gorgeous and eye-catching. L.V. Dongxuan and the other few old men believed they were the last of the glorious era of the hundred schools of philosophy, but they forgot that I had defeated them alone when we were young. I overwhelmed them when we were young. And now, how can I miss out on being the last of the glorious era of the hundred schools of philosophy? 
The master placed his hands behind his back. His Confucius robe was fluttering in the wind. His laugh echoed in the city tower. He took a step forward. His slim body seemed to burst with tremendous energy. He opened his mouth. His eyes bulged. He talked passionately and confidently. His eloquence was as amazing as lotus flowers. Righteous and tremendous energy gathered over his head. Bang. The next second, everyone in the frontier city of Dongyang County was wrapped by warm energy. War drums and horns sounded in their hearts. They felt a strong power, which was supporting and encouraging them. It gave them hope and courage. Dong, dong, dong. Everyone was extremely eager to fight. The fear of the fearless Dongyi people, the fear of the insane enemy was instantly gone. On the city tower, the soldiers were beating the drums stripped to the waist. They were snarling. Bathed in the righteous energy, they beat the drums harder than ever. Their faces flushed red because they were beating both sides of the drums at the same time with so much effort. The drumbeats were deafening. As if the drumbeats were expressing the city's will. The drummers would not go home until the enemy was repulsed. Yang Emu's blood was boiling. He fixed his eyes on the imperial advisor. His body was shaking. So was his face. As Dongyang County's mayor, he was certainly not dumb. Since the message sent to the capital city had got no response, he guessed what the emperor in the capital city was thinking. The emperor intended to take advantage of the barbarians to weaken all counties. Yang Mu had been desperate. However, the master had left the capital city and come to the east, giving Yang Mu hope again. At that moment, shrouded in the righteous energy from the master, looking at the hunchbacked master who would not retreat, why should he be desperate? He wished he could be a sword to kill the Dong Yi people. He raised his sword and snarled, Kill them. Mo Tianyu was struck dumb. The copper coin he used to read hexagrams slipped out of his hand and fell to the ground with a silvery sound. At that moment, he could see nothing but the master with righteous energy gathering above his head. At that moment, the master was defending the county's border. Chapter 188. The master repulsed 10,000 troops with his chi. Carrying a bookcase on his back, Sima Qingshan looked like a student. In the bookcase, there were a few scroll paintings, the tips of their wooden frames sticking out of the bookcase. He was traveling through the heavy snow on a horse with difficulty. He saw the magnificent city of Bailuo very quickly. Bailuo City was one of the six cities guarding the capital city. Since Lu Ping'an from White Jade City had become famous, the city seemed to have been endowed with a peace and a significance beyond itself. White Jade City was located in Bila. Lu Ping'an was in Bila as well. This ancient city became a sacred place for cultivators all over the world. Everyone in the world knew White Jade City, and because of White Jade City, they knew Bila City. Otherwise, it would not have gained everyone's admiration or become everyone's dream destination simply by being one of the six cities guarding the capital city. It was snowing. Sima Qingshan, in a thick cloak, saw his breath in the cold air. He was a little excited and a little expectant. He met many travelers going to the same destination on the state highway, so he did not feel lonely. He kept going straight and finally arrived at the city gate. Sima Qingshan's face was flushed in the cold. The Dragon Blood Army guarding the city looked at him and questioned him. Then, they let him enter the city. While the soldiers guarding the city were questioning him, Sima Qingshan was also observing them. If people had held Bila in awe only because of White Jade City, then the Dragon Blood Army gave these people another reason to feel that way. This was an extremely powerful city. A powerful city that could be compared to a county. In terms of a fighting force, the other five of the six cities guarding the capital city altogether might still not be a match for Bailuo. Sima Qingshan led his horse into Bailuo City. With rich spirit she was lingering everywhere, it looked like an immortal land. Vendors were hawking around in the snow. The air was filled with the delicious aroma of food. This was a prosperous and peaceful city. Everything was in order. People could not help but think about settling down here. What a great place! Sima Qingshan exclaimed. However, he did not linger in the city. Instead, he asked people the way to Bailuo Lake and then led his horse there. By then, three days had passed. It was time for Lu Ping'an to lecture on cultivation. He really did not want to miss out on such a rare opportunity. In fact, it was not difficult to find Bailuo Lake. After all, cultivators were all going to the lakeside in groups. 
Sima Qingshan found the way very easily. At the lakeside, he gazed at the mysterious spirit Qi hovering over the lake. It was snowing, but the lake's surface was not frozen. Instead, the water was strangely warm. Snowflakes melted as soon as they fell on the lake. Looking at the misty lake, Sima Qingshang involuntarily recalled something that had happened in Nanjin City. He remembered how Ni Chongqing, in a white robe, showed up before him to protect him. He waved his hand and knife energy burst forth. They turned into knife shadows which killed the intruding barbarian soldiers without much effort. Sima Qingshan had never been so shocked in his life. Not until then did he realize that cultivators could be so strong and that if he became a cultivator, he could achieve many things he had wanted to do but had never been able to. He had an immortal encounter. He entered that mysterious immortal ascension site and received the immortal's gift. There, he comprehended the Tao of painting. He felt like he was the chosen one, who was given lots of responsibilities. When Sima Qingshan had reached the lakeside, a lot of people were already crowded there. He could not even find a spot to stand. There was not even one boat at the dock. Many cultivators who wanted to go to the island by boat were at a loss. There had been boats there, however, Lu Chongkong had commanded that they be taken away. Lu Fan did not bother to manage those things, it was Lu Chongkong who had to manage them. It was impossible to go onto the island. As a result, many cultivators were anxious. They chose to find a place to rest close to the edge of the lake. They cleared away the snow and sat down cross-legged. Some people jumped onto the stone blocks by the dock and sat there. One after another, cultivators sat cross-legged and peered at Lake Island in the distance with their necks strained in anticipation. Sima Qingshan arrived a little late. He could barely find a place to stand. If he wanted to sit down cross-legged, he would have to move one or two miles away. But if he really stayed so far away, his turn would never come. Excuse me, could you make way, please? A girl's voice said. Sima Qingshan leaned sideways automatically. He saw a girl in white with a black pot on her back and a basket with both arms walking through the crowd. Beside her, a man carrying a sword was also carrying a full basket of herbs. Ah? Where are the boats? Looking at the empty dock, Ni Yu was dumbstruck. I suppose it's because young master is going to hold his lecture. That's why all of the boats are gone, Jing Yu said. It's all right. I'll take you back to the island. Jing Yu smiled. Then he put the herbs down and pressed two fingers against the sword handle. The Jing Heaven Sword was unsheathed. Clank. A vague sharp energy spread. Even the snow seemed to slow down slightly. The energy of the sword cut the air open like a dragon and disturbed the snowflakes. Go, Jing Yu urged with a smile. Carrying the basket with one hand and carrying Ni Yu with the other, he walked ahead. Jing Heaven Sword went into the water. Floating on the water surface, it moved forward. Jing Yu activated the spirit qi in his cinnabar field. After taking a few steps on the water, he landed on the Jing Heaven Sword and slid into the thick fog. Then, they disappeared. The cultivators at the lakeside were all amazed. The young masters from aristocratic families were so excited that they flushed. Cultivators from poorer families were also extremely shocked. Sima Qingshan's eyes lit up. White Jade City's disciples? He thought about it. Then, an idea flashed through his mind. He pushed his way through the crowd and finally came to the lakeside. The place was packed with people, so some cultivators were pretty annoyed by him. Don't push. You came late, so please stay behind. A young master from some aristocratic family snapped because Sima Qingshan pushed him lightly. Sima Qingshan apologized right away. In the distance, some poor cultivators waved at Sima Qingshan, inviting him to stand with them. Sima Qingshan was dumbstruck. Then, he broke out into a smile and went to stand with the poor cultivators. He put his bookcase down after greeting them, he took a scroll painting out. He took out his brush pen too. Many cultivators nearby looked at Sima Qingshan, confused. Sima Qingshan was wearing some old clothes which had been patched up. He looked poor. That was why those poor cultivators wanted to lend him a hand. Brother, are you going to paint in the snow to record this cultivator's great event? A poor cultivator asked out of curiosity. Sima Qingshan was dumbstruck. Then, he raised the brush pen and lifted the bookcase onto his back again. Shaking his head, he smiled. He pointed at Lake Island which looked vague in the mist with his brush pen. 
I want to go on to the island to listen to young Master Lu's lecture at a closer distance. When that had been said, everyone around him was dumbstruck. The young master who had scolded Sima Qingshan severely even burst out laughing. He thought Sima Qingshan was daydreaming. There were no boats. How would he go on to the island? Sima Qingshan did not try to explain. Gazing at Lake Island, around which water was rippling, he showed an expectant smile. Spirit Chi surged. A tremendous pressure instantly burst forth from him. All of a sudden, it swept along the entire lakeside of Bila Lake. The soldiers from Dragon Blood Army in charge of guarding the place were shocked. They threw Sima Qingshan an incredible look. They saw a funnel-shaped spirit Qi spiral emerge over Sima Qingshan's head. The scroll painting unfolded. It was suspended in the air. Grasping his brush pen, Sima Qingshan smiled. He used spirit Qi as ink. The tip of the brush pen turned black. He started to paint on the white paper. The brush pen was moving like a swimming dragon. He flung his brush pen hard, and thick ink splashed from the brush. Boat. Sima Qingshan smiled. As spirit Qi shook, the ink was thrown out of the scroll and fell on Bila Lake. People gave a gasp of astonishment because a boat appeared on the lake's surface. The boat was the color of ink instead of the usual color of wood. The ink turned into a boat. Sima Qingshan took his scroll painting and brush pen and jumped in an arc. He landed on the boat. The boat started to drift away. He and the boat gradually disappeared in the thick fog. On the shore, it was super quiet. Then a great disturbance started. My gosh, that poor painter turns out to be a great cultivator. That's gorgeous. Amazing. He paints so well. A cultivator's world is so mysterious. All the cultivators kept talking about it. If they were surprised by Jing Yu, who crossed the lake on his sword, they were totally shocked by the poor painter Sima Qingshan, who turned ink into a boat. The young master who had scolded Sima Qingshan turned extremely pale. No one expected a poor painter to be a secret great cultivator. The poor cultivators were so surprised that they could not even close their open mouths. Soon, they looked at each other with excited faces. They exchanged a glance with each other and closed their fists. It turned out poor people could become great cultivators too. It was absolutely possible that they could make it too. Standing on the ink boat, Sima Qingshan drifted into the thick fog. Instantly, like passing through dark willows and flowers in bloom to another village, a giant island shrouded in the thick fog emerged before him. It looked like an immortal island in the mortal world. In terms of landscape, it was unparalleled. On Lake Island, before White Jade City's pavilion, everyone was sitting cross-legged. LV Dongxuan and LV Mudui found a bluestone before sitting down cross-legged. Ning Zhao and Yi Yu found a place to sit too. Lu Chongkong, Luo Yu, Gong Xu Yu were also waiting quietly. Xie Yunling came from the Dao Pavilion as well. How could he miss young master's lecture? Xie Yunling also brought Li Sansui. She followed Xie Yunling quietly in a Taoist robe. The rich spirit Qi pervading the air made Li Sansui feel like she was on an immortal land. She lifted her head. With her fair and smooth-skinned chin shining in the sunlight, she gazed at the elegant figure on the pavilion. That man was watching the snow by the rail and appreciating the lake view, relaxed and unrestrained. Noises came from the dragon gate. The silhouette of a figure walked out from it. All cultivators in the world had assembled in Bila. Compared to the graceful and relaxing atmosphere at Bila Lake, Dongyang County had a totally different hell-like landscape. The air was filled with the pungent scent of blood. The morning light cut the sky open like a sharp sword. On the city tower of Dongyang County's frontier city, a man stood there, looking really close to the sky. Yet his thin body caused a shocking terror to spread over the enemy. The master was defending the border. This man was the imperial advisor, Kong Shu. He was standing on the city tower. Over his head, rich righteousness Qi was gathering. It vaguely gathered in a giant swirl. He was making promises and everything he said sounded magical. While he was speaking, the righteousness Qi motivated the guards on the city tower greatly. Their fatigue was gone. They were eager to fight. They would be the ones to protect their own home. Unsheathing his sword, Yang Mu kept snarling. One of Dong Yi's soldiers who would never die charged onto the city tower. Regardless of his personal danger, a guard jumped on him. Then, the two rolled down the city tower together. 
Both of their bones fractured, so the Dong Yi soldier could not climb the city wall again. It was an extremely brutal war. Dongyang County's soldiers might not be as strong as cultivator armies, but they were as brave and as upright as the latter. It was such a desperate battle that blood flowed in rivers on which abandoned shields were floating. Blood splashed on the master as well. His Confucius robe was stained red. However, the master was not intimidated at all. He was a small man, but at that moment, his body seemed to be bigger and straighter. The master gazed out at Dong Yi's army. His mouth was open. His eyes started. He knocked on a bluestone on the city tower. Righteousness Qi instantly started to surge and press down. Many of Dong Yi's soldiers wanted to retreat. They lost every bit of their will to fight. Except for those who could not die. They were still charging up the city tower fearlessly. They fought at close quarters against Dongyang County's army. Mo Tianyu's eyes turned red. Even the master was defending the border of the country. How could he run away? Therefore, he put his copper coins aside and borrowed a sword. He started to brandish the sword on top of the city tower. Aided by the master's righteousness Qi, the situation seemed to have reversed. The frontier city that had almost been taken was successfully defended. Yang Mu was very excited, he looked at the master with admiration. However, the master looked extremely solemn. Yang Mu looked where the master was looking. There, on a distant boat, a large man in a black robe was walking gracefully towards them with his hands clasped. Despite the retreating Dong Yi people at the city tower, the large man did not seem to be affected at all. He only looked astonished when he fixed his eyes on the master. The power of will, a non-cultivator who has attained such a strong power of will. The large man had no idea what righteousness Qi was, but in fact, righteousness Qi was a kind of willpower. The master was the one who invented righteousness Qi, so he certainly excelled at activating and using it. Mayor Yang, defend the city tower well, the master suddenly said. Then, the master, with his Confucius robe fluttering, turned to go down the city tower. The sword in Mo Tianyu's hand was stained with blood. He was dumbstruck. He hurried after the master. Yang Mu was still guarding the city tower. He had no idea what the master was going to do, but he knew the master was fighting with them together at the moment. Kill. We won't go back home unless we repulse the army of Dong Yi. On the city tower, influenced by the righteousness Qi, Dong Yang County's soldiers all waved their weapons and snarled in anger. The city tower's gate was slowly open. The master walked slowly. He already had one foot in the grave. His body was so old and thin that it seemed he would fall any time. The army followed the master out of the city. They were waving their weapons. The war cries were deafening. But the large man could only see the master. Interesting. A mortal who has the nerve to challenge cultivators too. The large man burst out laughing. His gesture was graceful and he never lost his elegance. He lifted his hand and waved it lightly. The Dong Yi people behind him charged instantly. The master and the large man exchanged a look as if they were the only two people remaining in the world. Cultivators, the master murmured. Then, he burst out laughing. The era of the hundred schools of philosophy had been terminated by cultivators. He never had a chance to fight Lu Ping'an. However, now, he, Kong Shu, was finally confronted with a cultivator. With Kong Shu's age, he was not very enthusiastic. However, the sight of the soldiers on the city tower defending the border of the country at the cost of their lives evoked his passion and enthusiasm which had been gone for too long. Kong Shu used to travel the world and go on adventures with that kind of passion too. In a Confucius robe, he visited the 100 schools of philosophy and left them in great pressure. Looking at the cultivator before him, Kong Shu burst out laughing. Reciting poems, he walked slowly through the battlefield. Right before him, the charging Dong Yi army gradually paused. Because the old man in the Confucius robe walking at the front of the Dongyang County army carried righteousness Qi while walking. Every word he recited was powerful. Their sounds over the battlefield made the people lose their passion and the will to fight. An invisible pressure fell on the Dong Yi people and made them feel as though their hearts were being squashed. They could not even breathe. The master took a step forward. Surprisingly, the Dong Yi forces took a step back. The large man squinted. His will is really strong. He raised his hand. He lightly waved it. The ground started to crack. Countless earth thorns pierced through the ground. The master's hair was blowing. 
his Confucius robes were fluttering. However, he was still fearless as if the many dead bodies before him were regular sand on the seashore. He kept reciting poems. The ground cracked and thorns pierced through the ground but the master was still walking forward. The earth thorns always missed him. The cracking ground could not shake his body. The large man could not help but narrow his eyes. This was not an acceptable result for him. He waved his hand. The energy in his body surged. More earth thorns pierced through the ground. However, the thin and old man walked slowly through the earth thorns. The earth thorns bled him. But the master did not stop reciting. For the large man, the gap between mortal people and cultivators was too huge to cross. However, at the moment, this old man gave him the feeling that this mortal man could fight a cultivator with his own strength alone. The large man was a little annoyed. He had investigated. He knew there were no cultivators in Dongyang County. However, this man suddenly showed up here. Since you are so eager to die, I'll satisfy you, the large man said coldly. He raised his hand. Bang! The ground cracked. It turned into two giant half spheres of earth. The large man clasped his hands hard. The two half spheres immediately pressed together. Dong! It felt like a big earthquake. The master's body was instantly devoured. Kill! The large man waved his hand. The Dong Yi army behind him charged towards Dong Yang County's army, shouting war cries. Mo Tianyu's eyes were extremely red. He was staring at the earth ball. That was the power of cultivators. They could even control giant rocks. The master was just a mortal man. How would he parry this? However, the earth ball suddenly split open. Then, the master walked out of the opening. His Confucius robe was a little ragged. Half of his body was covered in blood. However, the master was still smiling. Then, the smile changed. The master gazed at the Dong Yi army charging over. The righteousness chi over his head instantly pressed down. He snarled. His Confucius robe fluttered. Facing the righteousness chi, the Dong Yi army lost all of their will to fight. They all stopped moving. They took a breath. Then, they turned around to flee, leaving their weapons behind. The righteousness chi gathered like clouds, it turned into a giant palm. The master opened his mouth. His eyes flickered. He recited poems and essays, staring at that giant man. A righteous spirit is pervading heaven and earth, the master yelled. All of a sudden, the righteousness chi morphed into a hand which instantly hovered over the large man's head. The large man felt a vague pressure. On the battlefield, the master repulsed 10,000 troops with his chi and pressured the cultivator with a yell. Chapter 189. Let his chi recorded by masterpieces the master repulsed 10,000 troops with his chi. It was a shocking scene. At least, it was shocking for Dongyang County's mayor, Yang Mu, who was looking down from the city tower. When an old man with one foot in the grave shone like a burning sun, the whole world would obviously hold him in high regard and respect. Standing on the city tower, Yang Mu came up to a drummer. He took the drumstick and started to strike the drum himself by activating his chi and blood. The drum's surface vibrated. Dust flew around. Sweats and blood flowed down his forehead. Fight! Yang Mu shouted. Before the city tower, the master was reciting poems and essays. One poem after another came out of his mouth, he looked extremely kind and calm. Righteousness Chi was shapeless, but intertwined with the clouds, it was given a certain shape. Righteousness Chi was a demonstration of the will. The master could use Righteousness Chi in the past as well, but his Righteousness Chi was much more powerful at this point. Some anomaly arose in the world a few days ago. As though some kind of shackle had been released, the master's Righteousness Chi had a breakthrough. That was how Righteousness Chi powerful enough to repulse 10,000 troops could burst forth from him. The large man in the black robe looked extremely cold. He was pressured by a mortal. How was that even possible? He raised his hand. The earth's surface rolled up. Two brown pieces of earth, which looked like blankets, soared into the sky with a blare. They formed a shield before the large man. The hand the righteousness chi transformed into swatted at the shield. Buzz. Dust was flying around. The earth was quaking. The Dong Yi soldiers all coughed up blood. Some of the Dong Yi people who never seemed like they would ever die charged fearlessly. However, they became weak before the righteousness chi and flopped onto the ground like loaches. 
Not only did righteousness chi motivate people, it was also an extremely powerful way to attack. Especially to get rid of evil and dirty things, boom. A gale began to blow. Sand and stone flew around on the battlefield. The master stood in the same place as before. His Confucius robe, already stained with blood, was fluttering. He stared fixedly at the clay shield. His turbid but profound look seemed intent to see beyond that shield at the man behind it clearly. Dongyang County's army was super passionate now. Grasping their knives and swords tightly, they were looking at the master from behind. He seemed a giant mountain that blocked the enemy's attacks for them. As long as the master was there, their spiritual pillar would be there. Their spiritual pillar used to be Dongyang County's mayor, Yang Mu. However, since the master had come forward, he replaced Yang Mu as their pillar. It was his charisma of personality, a powerful influence. This was truly the Confucius master, one of the philosophers of the Hundred Schools, who had created a disturbance in Great Zhou before, his fame was well earned and deserved. Grasping the sword in his hand and looking at the master, Mo Tianyu was panicking. He should definitely never read hexagrams ever again. Bang. In the distance, the earth shield was split in two. The large, graceful man showed up. He parried all of the righteousness chi attacks while walking slowly. He looked at the master with admiration. A mortal triggered such power with only his will, the large man marveled. You are commendable. Then he raised his hand, which seemed to be forming a gesture, and recited a formula. The ground around him started to distort. It elevated little by little and turned into clay men. The clay men opened their eyes. They looked exactly like the large man, just like the duplicates at South County earlier. However, these duplicates were much weaker than the one in South County. Ten odd, large men stood there gracefully. The master narrowed his eyes. Over his head, righteousness chi gathered again. A roll of bamboo slits slipped out of his sleeve into his hand. He knocked on the bamboo slits lightly. The duplicates rushed at him, but he did not pay any attention to them. He unfolded the bamboo slits and started to read the poems and essays written on them. These were all written by great writers from ancient times. Whenever he finished reading one poem or an essay, the righteousness chi behind him would grow a little stronger. Before people knew it, thick clouds had gathered in the sky. The morning sunlight was gone. A cold wind came from the clouds. It blew at them. Snow that looked like rice fell from the sky. It was suddenly a little quieter in the world than it used to be. There was only the voice of the master reciting poetry. Capital City. Sitting in Zijin Palace, Yu Wenshu looked extremely cold. Zhang Li was imprisoned. His crime was plotting against the late emperor. All the ministers in the court were so scared, they did not have the nerve to say anything. The master had left. And Zhang Li wanted to leave too. They were all leaving him. He, Yu Wenshu, who used to be a good for nothing little emperor, was now the emperor of the Great Zhou Dynasty, who had full control of the Black Dragon Guard in Great Zhou's court. Wasn't he doing well? Why was everyone leaving him? In front of Zijin Palace, the old eunuch was kneeling on the ground with his head down. Old thing, tell me why? Yu Wenshu asked after looking up at the old eunuch. His eyes were bloodshot. The old eunuch, with his head down, trembled, but he did not answer. You are always silent. You never answer me. Yu Wenshu stood up from the dragon throne. Throwing the silent old eunuch with his head lowered a look, he let out a sigh. We are going to the imperial garden. Won't see anyone, Yu Wenshu said. Kong Nanfei will come later. Don't let him approach us. Then, he flicked his sleeve and left. Only his heavy footsteps lingered in the palace. Yes. The old eunuch lowered his head some more. He did not lift his head until Yu Wenshu had disappeared. His fair-skinned face looked a little tired. He waved his whisk fly and walked out of Zijin Palace. Kong Nanfei, in a Confucius robe, strode over with a sharp look. General Kong, please don't come any further. His Majesty isn't feeling well. His Majesty won't see anyone. The old eunuch said in a sharp voice when he saw Kong Nanfei. Kong Nanfei looked angry. Eunuch, why has His Majesty imprisoned Zhang Li? What crime did he commit? Kong Nanfei sounded indignant. However, the old eunuch was calm. He replied, Zhang Li plotted against the late emperor. His Majesty's decision is well grounded. Stop lying to yourself, Kong Nanfei said. 
He took a deep breath. Yu Wen Shu is enchanted by the black dragon. Feeding it with humans, that is sorcery. The current court has been heavily corrupt. Is it any different from the Great Zhou when North County and West County attacked the capital city? If it were not for Zhang Li, the Great Zhou dynasty would have fallen apart. But now, Yu Wen Shu imprisoned Zhang Li. He is biting the hand that fed him. Does he think he can kill loyal ministers unscrupulously just because he has the Black Dragon Guard? The old eunuch listened to Kong Nanfei's angry accusations quietly. The master has left the capital city. Zhang Li wanted to resign. His Majesty is feeling hurt that he is losing his right-hand men. His Majesty is just worried that General Zhang Li was deluded by the North County bandits. It was snowing. Snowflakes kept falling before the old eunuch and Kong Nanfei. They looked at each other. After a long time had passed, Kong Nanfei shook his head disappointedly. Then, he flicked his sleeve and left. Eunuch, please pass on a message to His Majesty. The master left the capital city. Zhang Li wanted to resign. He really needs to examine himself to find out why. The master once said that everything that happens has a why behind it. Kong Nanfei's voice echoed through the snow. The old eunuch's slightly bowing body trembled a little. In the dungeon of the imperial city, the dirtiest place in the world, it was dark, damp and smelt humid. The old eunuch came in a coach. There were two black dragon guards who were guarding the dungeon. The two black dragon guards exchanged a look when they saw the old eunuch. They went inside the dungeon after some hesitation. Then, a man in black light armor showed up. He was one of the thirteen black dragon armored men, one of the emperor's bodyguards. Eunuch. This general cupped his hands. I want to see General Zhang. General, please do me a favor, the old eunuch said. The black dragon bodyguard frowned. Eunuch, do you have his majesty's permission? No. The old eunuch shook his head. Well, then I have to say sorry. No one is allowed to go into the dungeon without his majesty's permission. Zhang Li is a felon. The black dragon bodyguard refused to budge. The old eunuch threw the black dragon bodyguard a meaningful look. I just want to persuade General Zhang Li, the old eunuch said. General Zhang Li and I got along well during the creation of the black dragon guard. I'm feeling some pity to see him imprisoned here. The black dragon bodyguard raised his eyebrows. This old eunuch was using Zhang Li's feat of gathering the black dragon guard to pressure him. Indeed, Zhang Li had created the black dragon guard and was once its leader. However, what did that matter now? The current black dragon guard was under the control of the 13 black dragon armored men. However, this black dragon bodyguard rolled his eyes and grinned. He leaned slightly to the side. Eunuch, please. The old eunuch went into the dungeon. The black dragon bodyguard squinted. Then, he nodded at a black dragon guard. Follow him. If this old thing does anything unusual, block the dungeon right away. Then the black dragon bodyguard told someone to bring him a horse, and he headed for the imperial palace in person. It was very dark in the dungeon. Walking across the damp ground, the old eunuch was solemn. He passed by each cell and saw emotionally numb people in them. In the deepest part of the dungeon, he saw Zhang Li, handcuffed and fettered, sitting upright on a bed covered with straw. As if he had sensed the old eunuch's energy, Zhang Li opened his eyes slowly. Kai Lian waited for a long time, but she did not see Zhang Li come back. Instead, she received the news that Zhang Li had been imprisoned. It was shocking news. The entire court of the Great Zhou was greatly disturbed. Ministers had started to condemn Zhang Li, verbally or in writing listing Zhang Li's crimes. Some people said Zhang Li had been bought out by North County's Tantai Zong, and others said it was Zhang Li's fault that the expedition against North County failed. Many people made a fuss about Zhang Li's plotting against the late emperor. Kai Lian was so angry that she flushed. When Kong Nanfei came back with a poker face, Kai Lian realized this little emperor was really going to kill Zhang Li. Who came forward when the great Zhou was in crisis? Did this bullsh T emperor lose his conscience? Kai Lian swore at Zijin Palace. Then, covered by Kong Nanfei, she left the city on a horse. She had to leave. Since Zhang Li had been imprisoned, the whole capital was in a great fright. The thirteen black dragon armored men were leading the black dragon guard to capture Zhang Li's accomplices. Everyone was seized with fear. As Zhang Li's subordinate, Kai Lian had to escape. 
She had to stay alive to save Zhang Li. Deep in Zijin Palace, outside of the Imperial Garden, Yu Wenshu heard the terrified screams of young eunuchs and maids from the pond behind him in the sound of chewing bones. Gazing at the snow, he was very calm. Now that the world forced us against benevolence, we will be a tyrant forever. He once said this to the rebel, Zhao Kuo, by the pond, with the black dragon wrapping around his body. Right now, this seemed to be coming true. A kind person was more likely to get bullied. So did a weak person. Then again, Yu Shu was neither kind nor weak, he had great Zhou fully under his control. The water behind him finally restored its peace. Yu Shu turned around slowly. With his hands behind his back, he walked to the pond. He could still smell the pungent scent of blood. Blood was dissolving in the pond water. The black dragon popped its head out of the water surface. With its mouth open, it showed its sharp teeth. Gazing at the black dragon, Yu Shu raised his hand to gently touch its freezing scales. I have nothing left, except you, Yu Shu said, narrowing his eyes. The master had left the capital city. Zhang Li resigned. Everyone was leaving him. The black dragon wrapped around Yu Shu's body. Black air seemed to seep out from between its scales into Yu Shu's body. Outside the imperial garden, fast footsteps could be heard. A young eunuch came quickly. Your Majesty, the black dragon, wrapping around Yu and Shu, fixed its sharp eyes on the young eunuch. It growled. Water was sprayed from the gills around its head. The young eunuch turned pale, feeling extremely cold. Say it. Looking at the young eunuch, Yu and Shu patted the black dragon to calm it down. News came from Bila City, the young eunuch said. The 13th armored man of the 13 black dragon armored men, Lu Dao, led a team of black dragon guards to Bila City under Your Majesty's command to record Lu Ping'an's lecture on cultivation. However, Lu Dao was killed because he refused to get off his horse at Bila City before Lu Chongkong. The team of black dragon guards is now imprisoned in Bai Luo's dungeon. Lu Chongkong said in person that they would be released once the lecture in White Jade City was over. As soon as he finished speaking, the air in the Imperial Garden turned frigid. Yu Wen Shu, who stood by the pond, stared at the young eunuch with cold and heartless eyes. That look made the young eunuch go weak at the knees. He peed on himself and flopped onto the ground. Outside Dongyang County, the master's Confucius robe was stained with blood. He looked at the approaching clay men calmly. A cultivator's ways were mysterious indeed. The master had learned this early on. He had exchanged blows with Lu Fan once in Bila. He knew Lu Fan had not gone all out at that time. He had sensed an extremely dreadful pressure from Lu Fan. At that time, young Master Lu from Bila had not been known by the world yet. But back then, everyone in the world knew him. His feat of defeating four philosophers from the hundred schools made him even more famous. Cultivators, the master shook his head, smiling. Some people say that only cultivators can deal with cultivators, I do believe that. However, I'm not convinced. The hundred schools of philosophy were not small fry. They once led an era. Suddenly, the master's eyes lit up. Like fire in the dark night, they were so bright that everyone was astonished. He turned around to look at the enthusiastic Dongyang County Army and Mo Tianyu, whose eyes were bloodshot. He grinned. I've done so many things in my life. The master let out a sigh. Now, the only thing I want to do is to help you go back home safe and sound. This is kind of my atonement for you, on behalf of the current great Zhou. When that had been said, the master's hair fluttered although there was no wind. As if a wind was blowing his clothes, the master's eyes were very bright, like there was a fire burning within. Righteousness Qi gathered over his head. Like an ignited bonfire, it emitted an extremely bright light. The large man in the black robe frowned slightly. He had a bad feeling. Under his control, the countless clay men seemed to be slowing down as they approached the master. The large man's face was solemn. He made the clay men charge forward. How can a mortal fight a cultivator like me? The large man was unconvinced. The master looked supremely glorious. He had never gone into any dragon gate. He had never pondered on spirit chi. But at this moment, his power was soaring incessantly. Even the clouds rolling in the sky turned black because of him. It seemed like the origin of the world had been triggered at this moment. In Bila City, Lu Fan, who sat in the pavilion, 
was looking at the crowd before White Jade City's pavilion and at the many cultivators at the lakeside. He seemed to sense something. He could not help but look towards the east, his eyes narrowed. Mo Tianyu felt cold. He saw the master growing stronger and stronger, almost as strong as Lu Ping'an from Bila. However, the stronger the master became the heavier his heart was, and the more uneasy he felt. The master was like a burning sun he looked brilliant. He was super calm. His righteousness chi was burning like fire. He turned his head to look at where Bila City was located and let out a sigh. He had once said that if it was possible, he hoped he could spend the rest of his days on Lake Island of Bila. But it seemed like, that would not happen. The master's energy grew stronger and stronger. He was no weaker than a cultivator in the peak of the chi core realm or even internal organs realm. He used his righteousness chi, which he had gathered from burning souls and reciting saints' masterpieces, as the kindling to shine upon everything in the world. Let my chi be recorded by masterpieces. The master's voice was loud and resonate. In the next second, under the brilliant light, every clay man running on the ground vanished like melted snow. The large man covered his head. Blood flowed from his eyes, ears, nostrils, and mouth. He kneeled down, screaming. His soul had been severely injured. He looked at the extremely brilliant-looking old man, hardly able to believe what had happened. He looked at the old man as if he was looking at a lunatic. This world had nothing but lunatics. He retreated into the sea like a lunatic and disappeared. Dong Yi's army also retreated. Scared out of their wits, they rushed to climb into their boats one after another. The fire extinguished itself. The ultimate brightness would finally dim out at some point too. It started to snow again as if the sky knew to play a tragic song. Snowflakes kept falling on the straight-backed old man who was staring into the distance. Chapter 190. Enemies forever, friends forever it was snowing heavily. The flying snowflakes were playing an elegy, dong, dong, dong. War drums kept sounding. The last drumbeat came and it sounded like the drum was broken. Flying snowflakes shattered. Dong Yi's army had retreated. As the large man was heavily injured, they all fled back home in their boats. On the city tower, Yang Emu's eyes turned red at such a sight. He threw the drumstick away. The blood on his armor had frozen solid. He walked towards the parapet to lean against it. He gazed at the man sitting in the snow with a complicated feeling and admiration in his chest. Mo Tianyu pierced his sword into the snow. He ran towards the master and approached him. The master, sitting on the battlefield full of dead bodies, looked a little tired and a little nostalgic. Master. Mo Tianyu knelt down on the ground. He felt as though a hand had grasped his heart and squeezed it hard. The master was sitting cross-legged. He was covered with snow which seemed to be cooling him down. Consequently, his body felt colder and colder. Sitting upright on the battlefield, the master looked out at the vast sea in the distance. Snowflakes fell into the sea. A wave came and they were instantly gone. The wooden boats were fleeing from the coast like rats, panicked and scared. Cultivators, the master said, panting, they are really strong. Mo Tianyu grasped the snow on the ground. He took a deep breath. The cold air entered his lungs, so he coughed. He coughed so hard that he even almost burst into tears. Master, let's go back to the book pavilion. Mo Tianyu said while coughing and crying. He felt remorseful. He should not have read that hexagram. Great blessing, that was bullsh asterisk t. What are you crying for? I don't have many days left anyways. Everyone dies. I would rather end my life in a great victory with a cultivator than die of old age at the book pavilion, gazing at the banana leaves bent by the weight of snow every day. This is better. I have one less regret now. The master sounded calm, and even a little resolute. I've done many things in my life. Visiting the hundred schools, overwhelming powerful people of the world, I will never regret some of them, but other things I've done made me regret very much. However, what I regret the most is not fighting with old LV and the others against young Master Lu, the master said. This fight kind of resolved my regret. At least, I proved it is possible for a mortal to defeat a cultivator. The master's calm voice was a heavy blow for Mo Tianyu. He had experienced how powerful Lu Fan was, how powerful cultivators were, all by himself. And the master told him that with such actions, a mortal could defeat a cultivator. Looking into the distance, the master felt like it had stopped snowing already. 
The sun rose from the horizon. Its brilliant light spilled on the master's face. His face was blushing and shining. But in fact, the sky over the sea was overcast. Do you have alcohol? The master asked slowly. Yes. Yes. Mo Tianyu came to himself. He hurried to untie the calabash from his waist. He loved alcohol. Of course, he always had alcohol with him. After three rounds of drinking, he would definitely tell one fortune. He took the calabash and pulled out the cork with care. He gave it to the master after wiping the mouth of the calabash with his sleeve. The master smiled. He raised his hand slowly. He moved very slowly, but finally, he grasped the calabash. His fingertip touched the inner side Mo Tianyu's finger. Mo Tianyu felt like he was touching a piece of ice. His finger felt cold. The master took the calabash. He took a sip from it. The master let out a long sigh. He squinted as if he was drunk. Holding the calabash in hand, he looked up at the red sun glowing in the sky. The old man froze there. Cold snow fell into Mo Tianyu's collar, making an extremely cold feeling run down his back. He leaned back and flopped onto the ground. It began to snow more and more. The master's body slowly covered up with a thick layer of snow. Lake Island, Bila, White Jade City's pavilion. Lu Fan let out a long sigh. He had never expected the master to draw the curtain on the era of the hundred schools of philosophy in such a way. This senior definitely deserved his respect. Lu Fan was holding his bronze liquor cup, looking over the rail. He extended his hand. He tilted the liquor cup and moved it in an arc before him. The wine spilled, shining in the sunlight. This wine was a toast to the master. Downstairs, LV Dongxuan had been anticipating Lu Fan's lecture eagerly. However, the eagerness on his face gradually faded when he saw what the young master did and watched the wine spill in the air. He seemed to guess something. He used his Tianji calculation technique, and then his heart started to tremble. He reached out to grasp the gold necklace around his neck. The gold necklace rolled fast, chiming. Then, his face turned pale. Gong Shu Yu, Xie Yunling, and Hua Dongliu sensed something was wrong with LV Dongxuan. They looked over at him, frowning. Old LV, anything wrong? Hua Dongliu asked directly. He was a straightforward person. LV Dongxuan's lips trembled. He looked into the east. Although everything was shrouded in the spirit chi from Lake Island, he seemed to be able to look through the thick mist. Old Kong has gone to a better place, LV Dongxuan said. His voice was a little hoarse, low and emotional. Xie Yunling shivered. His pupils shrank involuntarily. Hua Dongliu lost control of his sword spirit. It went unbridled and transformed into an unsheathed sharp sword. Gong Shu Yu opened his mouth, but he had no idea what to say. He had fought against Kong Shu with Mo Beike his whole life. This unexpected news really shocked him. After the shock, a helpless and emotional feeling arose in him. Seeing the philosophers gazing at the sky in a trance, the other people around them wondered what had happened. And seeing young master Lu spilling his wine from White Jade City's pavilion, they guessed that something big enough to shock the whole world must have happened. However, they had no idea what it was, North County. Mo Beike looked into the east. His hands were shaking. They were shaking violently. He covered one hand with the other hand, but he could not control himself at all. After a long time had passed, he felt kind of lost. He stood up from his chair and walked out of the tent. He looked at the boundless plain covered with snow beyond Tianhen Gate. It was snowing heavily. A snowflake fell onto the palm of his hand and melted quickly, like a teardrop. His heavy eyebags shook. After a while, he let out a long sigh. They had been enemies as well as friends in their entire lives. Old thing, I wish you all the best in the other world. Capital City, Book Pavilion. Smoke from sandalwood incense was curling up slowly. In a Confucius robe, Kong Nanfei stood before the window looking at the banana leaves under the weight of the snow. He was in a slight trance. He felt uneasy somehow. All of a sudden, crack. The branch of the banana tree finally broke under the weight of the snow. It fell into the backyard of the book pavilion. Looking at the broken branch, Kong Nanfei fell silent. His heart was heavy somehow. White Jade City's pavilion. Lu Fan's hair was blowing in the wind. He had not paid any attention to the battle in Dongyang County. After all, he could not pay attention to what was happening in the world all the time. However, at this moment, 
Lines jumped in his eyes. He was watching a playback of the battle outside of Dongyang County. The master, a mortal, had set his will and righteousness chi on fire. He severely injured a strong man in Peak Foundation Building. Blood oozed from the latter's eyes, ears, nostrils, and mouth and he had fled in disgrace. He had no spirit chi at all. However, he made the origin of the world react simply by his will. The moment the master burnt his righteousness chi, he almost surpassed a cultivator in the internal organs realm. Lu Fan felt a little emotional. Let his chi be recorded by masterpieces. He looked at the old man holding the calabash, seated facing the sea. His thrumming on the arm of the wheelchair suddenly came to a halt. He pulled the phoenix feather arm lightly. A loud phoenix chime came. In the next second, the phoenix feather sword turned into a fire phoenix that flew into the dragon gate. In the red dragon's dragon gate, Dongyang County. The red dragon was sleeping. It opened its eyes all of a sudden. A red fire flared. It opened its mouth with a deafening growl. In the dragon gate, a fire phoenix flew out. At the center of the fire phoenix, there was a red sword. This sword brought forth a dreadful energy. The red dragon's ferocious face froze. Its head slipped back right away. Watching the fire phoenix disappearing, red dragon retreated into the dragon gate immediately. The fire phoenix flew out. It flew across the sky over Dongyang County like a flowing light streaking across the air. On the city tower of Dongyang County, Yang Mu looked up at the fire phoenix dragging fire behind it. He was shocked and at a loss. He saw the fire flying beyond the beach onto the boundless sea. Bang! With a loud chime, the fire phoenix flew down. At the bottom of the sea, the large man wrapped in the slurry, who was cultivating and recovering from his injuries, was instantly startled. The lord of the plain? He lifted his head and saw beams of bright light overhead. They devoured him in an instant. The fire created a concave tornado in the water. It did not return to normal until a long time had passed. At White Jade City's pavilion, Lu Fan, who had pulled out the Phoenix Feather Sword, looked as if he had not accomplished anything important. Staring at the crowd below, he started to speak. It was time to tell them what he was supposed to tell them. Heaven and earth have their own wills. They convert the origin and produce elements. But cultivators can achieve impossible things. They gather spirit chi and strive for an immortal life, Lu Fan said. His voice was not loud, but it lingered in everyone's ears. Everyone trembled. When they came to themselves, they realized that young Master Lu's lecture had started. The world has different elements. They are metal, wood, water, fire, and earth, corresponding to the five treasures that have to be refined in internal organs realm. Beginner cultivators begin with one wisp of spirit chi in their cinnabar fields, so their cinnabar field becomes their chi core. The ultimate chi core produces a spirit chi spiral, and that is the start of the internal organs. The internal organs realm aims to explore the human body's ability to produce elements and also elemental spirit chi. There is a higher level realm beyond the internal organs. In fact, this higher level realm is quite similar to the chi core. In the chi core realm, cultivators refine their core through chi, which is not tangible. So, it is an invisible core. Beyond internal organs, cultivators combine the essence of the human body with spirit chi to refine a true core and this realm is called Golden Elixir Realm. Lu Fan's voice lingered on Lake Island. Everyone was dumbstruck at first, and then, shocked. Cultivators beyond Bila Lake were listening attentively as well, but they did not hear much. Lu Chongkong and others were fascinated. Invisible core, true core. This completely refreshed their knowledge of cultivation and it was the first time they had heard about a realm beyond internal organs. Ning Zhao's eyes narrowed. Golden elixir was beyond internal organs? Refining a true core in the body must be much more difficult than refining qi core. After all, it was easy to make something that already existed vanish, but it was difficult to make something that never existed come into existence. That was creation. Of course, it would be difficult. On the lake, Sima Qingshan, rocking on his ink boat, also knitted his brows. Refining qi into a golden elixir, of course, before that, it was necessary to comprehend the elemental spirit qi that specifically belonged to the internal organs realm. While people were lost in their thoughts, Lu Fan continued to speak. Certainly, the golden elixir method is a cultivation method from alien worlds. It is something that doesn't come naturally. However, cultivators can achieve impossible things. 
Lu Fan said slowly, so I have another cultivation method. Lu Fan looked down at the crowd from the second floor of White Jade City's pavilion. The crowd was dumbstruck. Then, they focused on his words. Beyond the internal organs is the heavenly lock. What is the heavenly lock? The number of bones of the human spine comes in the multiples of three. It is divided into nine sections, so it is also called nine-sectioned heavenly lock. Refining your spine to open the heavenly lock will take you to the realm beyond the internal organs. The ninth section is the heavenly palace lock. Once that is opened, a worldwide holocaust will be triggered, Lu Fan explained. Everyone heard him because his voice drifted downwind. They were all dumbstruck. Compared to the golden elixir cultivation method, this cultivation method is actually more complex, more dangerous, and harder to learn. But accordingly, it is more powerful. Of course, it is still too early to talk about these cultivation methods. You have a long way to go if you want to break through into the golden elixir realm and open the heavenly lock. The anomaly of the world was the immortal's plan. Now that spirit chi has spread far and wide in the world, everyone has a chance of becoming a cultivator. That being said, since everyone has different talents, only a few of you can become real cultivators. Lu Fan continued, there was a brilliant cultivation era in ancient times, but it too, declined. Now, spirit chi has rejuvenated. The immortal has shown up to pass on the cultivation methods. Everything seems to have started over again. The cultivation era in ancient times failed mainly because of weakness. The cultivators were too weak. The people were too weak. They were too weak to resist calamity. And now, Lu Fan declared slowly, Spirit Qi has rejuvenated and cultivation will become rampant again. As a leading cultivating power, White Jade City won't let what happened to the ancient cultivation era repeat again. That is why this lecture on cultivation is being held. Many people could not quite follow him. After all, they had never entered that central palace or seen the ancient battlefield Lu Fan had intentionally set up. Lu Fan flicked his sleeve. Spirit Qi instantly gathered in the air. Soon, an image appeared in front of them. Everyone looked up at that image. They saw a shocking era in it. A war between the ancient cultivation civilization and alien evil spirits was depicted. Everyone was so shocked that their calmness could not be restored for a long time after seeing it. It turned out that the land under their feet bore such a heavy history. Seeing those ancient cultivators die one after another, many people felt pressured and threatened. The current world evolves with the origin of the world at its center. Elements can be produced. All approaches to cultivation speak of immortality, Lu Fan said, glancing over the crowd. Approaches to cultivation are dead, but humans are alive. Each of you can go your own way. Just like the era of hundred schools of philosophy, which was so brilliant. They kept improving because of competition. It is the same now, even with cultivation. The era of cultivation should be more competitive because only those who win will get further along the way of cultivation. The cultivator's world is way crueler than you've imagined, Lu Fan said. His white robe was fluttering in the wind, his eyes were blazing like torches. He continued speaking. Then, the audience asked him about what baffled them, and Lu Fan answered all of those questions. He did not reject a single one of them. Many people cherished this opportunity a lot because they had no idea when young master's next lecture would be. It was getting dark. The lecture lasted the whole day, from the daytime to the evening. Finally, Lu Fan ended the lecture. He left the audience for the night to let them digest what he had said. This lecture he had held was actually a preparation for the world to upgrade to a mid-level martial world. A spectacular cultivation world could not be created by him alone. The people of this world had to be the main force to create a brilliant world. Lu Fan was simply helping them to hasten this process and keep them on the right track. A wisp of red light flew back from the dragon gate. It was suspended before Lu Fan quietly. The phoenix feather sword gave off an ultimately brilliant light, shining like a burning flame. The last wanderer's soul was shredded. Nothing of him remained. Lu Fan let out a sigh. The master's death was beyond his anticipation but it did not seem weird to him. The master had never refined spirit chi at any dragon gate. Life could not be immortal without cultivation, which was to say, he did not have many days left even if he had not engaged in this battle. Outside of Dongyang County, the master had almost killed a cultivator at peak foundation building with his own mortal body. He drew the curtain shut over the era of the hundred schools of philosophy with such a great feat. 
The master had no regrets. It was a peaceful death. The phoenix feather sword returned to the wheelchair and turned into its arm once again. Lu Fan was gazing out at Bila Lake, feeling the gentle breeze. The morning light shone through the snow and spilled on the ground. While the cultivators in Bila City were still immersed in what Lu Fan had imparted, a piece of sad news spread across the great Zhou dynasty.